हे माइडियो वॉरियर्स वेलकम 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 टू द नीट कॉन कर सीरीज एंड दिस सीरीज इज फॉर द ड्रॉपर्स एज वेल एज द फ्रेशर्स वेदर यू आर अ नीट 2024 एस्पिरेंट और अ नीट 2025 एस्पिरेंट दिस इज एन एब्सोल्युटली फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट सीरीज ऑन यूट्यूब वेयर आई एम गोइंग टू पर्सनली कोच यू सेकेंड आई डोंट वॉन्ट दिस एड जस्ट होल्ड ऑन कैन आई गेट रेड ऑफ दिस Yep, I can. Definitely. Yes. So, guys, here I'm going to exclusively train you, coach you for your neat physics, and there are couple of chapters which I had already done, like basic maths as well as units and dimensions. So that is something which you can definitely watch in the playlist. But today I'm going to focus on vectors, how to operate on vectors. That is addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Right. So that is what we are going to see in today's class. Welcome aboard. Hello Anu. Hello Ovia. Hello Sanskurti. Hello Manchala. Anu Prabha. Welcome Saratha. Welcome Neat Aspirant. Welcome Killer Science. Welcome Gautam. And after the session is over, I would also want in the comments whether you are a Neat 2024 Aspirant, whether you are a dropper or a fresher, or whether you are a Neat 2025 Aspirant. I would be waiting to hear that from you after the session is over. But obviously, this session is going to be long. This is a one-shot marathon. It's a complete detailed marathon where I'm going to teach you about vectors, guys. Like you can see over here, right? I am going to start with with right scalars and vectors. Then I will teach you vector addition, the geometrical as well as the formula methods, the vector subtraction. Then we'll also go to resolution of vectors, unit vectors, how to represent vectors and the vector product that is dot as well as the cross product. So this is the aim of today's class. And I want everybody to first of all, subscribe to the Unacademy Neat English channel because this is your channel. This is a channel for all of you and these series are going to run exclusively for you. So if you're not going to show support, I will be forced to stop this series. If you do not show your love, I'll be forced to stop this series. If you do not get in your friends, I'll be forced to stop this series. So guys, you have to support because this is free of course, I'm not going to gain anything. So if you want this series to continue, you want more lectures, you want mock tests after the syllabus is over, you want things to be done, you are support is needed for all of us, all right? So smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, tell about this channel to your friends, to your cousins, to your batchmates. Because this is a channel for you, by you, and you should feel proud about it. Let's get going, guys. Let's get going. And, you know, almost so many students from South have conquered NEET in 2023. They got awesome marks. They are awesome toppers. And, uh, you know, so many of them are from South. And uh, I think the topper is also from Tamil Nadu. So, guys, next year we have to rock this even better. We have to do even better. And we hope that most of the toppers are from the, you know, uh, Unacademy Neat English channel. Let's hope that that dream will be amazing when it is fulfilled. Right? So, let's begin the class, guys. Let's begin the class. So, let's start with scalars and vectors. Now, to talk about it first, I will tell you about something called as physical quantity. I will talk about physical, physical quantity. Now, what is the meaning of physical quantity, my dear students? Physical quantity is basically anything which can be measured. Anything which can be measured. Like, I have fever, so I can measure the temperature. I can measure my height. I can measure my weight. I can also probably measure what is the force acting on something. I can measure the current passing through a wire. So these are quantities which can be measured. So you will notice guys, any physical quantity, any physical quantity will be always magnitude, magnitude times the unit, magnitude times the unit. Just to give you an example of this, just to give you an example of this guys, observe this carefully. What about, you know, when I say force is 20 Newton, Newton is the unit, 20 is the value or the magnitude, 20 is the value. Similarly, I can give you another example, all right, the temperature is, you know, uh, 96 degree Fahrenheit. The degree Fahrenheit is the unit, 96 is the magnitude. Is that clear, guys? 
is that understood my dear students what is the meaning of physical quantity it cannot uh, it cannot be things like happiness which you cannot measure i can measure the number of likes but i cannot measure your josh so the way i indirectly measure your josh is when you smash the like button now these physical quantities are further classified into two sub categories so one is called as a scalar quantity and the other one is called as a vector quantity now what is the meaning of a scalar quantity and what is the meaning of a vector quantity scalar quantities can be described properly with their magnitude that means their value alone but vector quantities apart from their magnitude i would have to tell you guys the direction so there are some quantities which i define it to be scalar some quantities which i define it to be vector whether uh, depending on whether you need the direction or you do not need the direction apart from the magnitude magnitude is always must magnitude is there both in scalar and vector but apart from magnitude direction is there in vector understand this so scalars okay what do you need guys you need magnitude alone magnitude alone is enough to describe it but for vectors you need both magnitude and your direction you need both magnitude and the direction exactly very good exactly uh, sir volume is a vector quantity no no volume is not area is a vector quantity you will see that in 12th standard yes aswad why not you are from the avenger batch oh no problem Srinath. join in and you can always catch up even if you're joining in a little bit late can you guys quickly give me the examples can you quickly give me the examples of scalar quantities scalar quantities like time is a scalar quantity mass is a scalar quantity whereas weight is a vector quantity guys because weight means force and the direction is downwards so it is a vector quantity velocity is a vector quantity you will see but speed is only magnitude like when i ask you what is the top speed of the car you will say sir 200 kilometers per hour but you will never say north or east that will be senseless but when i say where is that car going then you will say the car and how is that car going then you will say yes the car is going with 35 kilometers per hour in the northeast direction so you have specified both the value as well as the direction that is called velocity distance my dear students distance is a scalar quantity whereas you will notice that displacement displacement is a vector quantity right even uh, your force is a vector quantity even your acceleration is a vector quantity even your field is a vector quantity your uh, energy is a scalar quantity work is a scalar quantity power is a scalar quantity guys current is a scalar quantity temperature is a scalar quantity so all these are examples of scalars and vectors very good everybody knows distance and displacement sir distance is scalar uh, vector is uh, displacement okay distance is scalar velocity uh, displacement is vector so that is the most common example but i've given you other examples also for your notes now that you understand the difference between these two please give me a thumbs up let me go ahead and tell you the different ways of writing a vector and also how do you show a vector different ways you write a vector and the different properties of a vector so this is what we are going to learn now so first of all let's see how do i represent a vector represent represent a vector quantity how do i represent a vector quantity imagine imagine guys champa this is just an example champa champa moves moves 20 meters towards the north direction champa moves 20 meters towards the north direction so i have to show the displacement of champa champa is our favorite candidate right so champa has to move 20 meters what i will do i will probably start like this and i will go up like this this is north direction this is east this is west this is south and i will choose that this length is 20 meters or i will put a scale one centimeter is equal to one meter so this will be 20 centimeters hence it will be 20 meters if tomorrow if tomorrow champa decides to move if tomorrow champa decides to move champa decides to move only 10 meters towards the north 
then I will just show it exactly half the length. I will show it starting from here till here with an arrow mark with exactly half the length. Do you guys agree? This blue one will be half the green's length. If I tell you guys, if I tell you guys, Champa, Champa, all right, Champa moves, moves 10 meters south, 10 meters south, then exactly same value but in the opposite direction. So you'll start from here, but you will go down like this. You will go down like this, right? This is how you will go. Perfecto. Now, now, here, what you realize when you are showing vectors, you start from a point and go to a point and there is an arrow mark. Velocity, force, momentum, displacement, start and go. This is basically your tail of the vector. This is basically the head of that vector. This is diagrammatical way of representing a vector. This length of the vector, whatever is the length of the vector, gives you the magnitude of that particular vector quantity. The length of the vector, like you can see, gives you the magnitude, the value of the vector quantity. Is that clear? More the length, more the magnitude. As simple as that. The arrow mark shows you the direction in which the vector is headed. Guys, do you know these symbols? What is this symbol and what is this symbol? How many of you know these two symbols? How many of you know these two symbols, guys? How many of you know these two symbols? What is the dot and what is that cross? This dot means that's a vector coming towards you. That is a vector coming towards you. Basically, you can also say out of the plane. It is coming out of the plane. But the moment I make it across, then it is going away from you. Away from you. And I can also say it is in the plane into the plane of that particular paper or the board. That's what it means. Very good. No, it is not cross and dot product, guys. This is, you put a dot and you put a circle. It is a vector coming towards you. I throw a ball towards you. Imagine it comes and blasts on your face out of the screen. So that is this one. This pink one is going away from you. You are throwing a ball towards me. Just imagine that. So that's going away. Cross means going away. Dot means coming towards you. Perfecto. But there are other ways also. This was diagrammatical way. There was, that was diagrammatical way, guys. I showed it on diagram. But there is another way of representing vector. And that is why a Alphabets where numbers like for example Like for example, this is my vector. This is point a this is point B This is point a this is point B. Okay, everybody with me. I'm going from here to here then I can call it as vector vector a B which is represented as a B bar or you can also use a b with an arrow mark or you can basically just say in words you are moving from point a to point b in these many uh, in this particular direction in uh, and you are moved by this much amount so you can specify it in words but usually when you write it in words it's a big thing so you can just put you know uh, the bar between the head and the tail this is not the same this is not the same as writing B A. When I write this alphabet first, that means B is the tail and then A is the head. But actually A is the tail, B is the head. So first alphabet is always the tail, second alphabet is always the head. Is that okay? Now this is my writing it using two alphabets. But you can also use one alphabet, my dear students. You can also use one alphabet, my dear students. Let's say I write this as P vector. So I can just write this as a P vector. In this, there is no head and tail uh, you know, relationship. You will not understand what is the head and tail. So generally, smaller alphabets are used you know, if, instead of two alphabets, if you don't want to write two alphabets, you can use smaller alphabets. Or if you are using capital alphabets, then one will be the tail, one will be the head. Is that clear, my dear students? Is that clear, my dear students? Very good. Awesome. Now, I want you guys to tell me this. What is the meaning of, what is the meaning of AB's mod, mod of AB bar? 
try to recollect guys your basic maths from 6th or 7th standard modulus of a number is the distance from the origin or the zero so it is the absolute value modulus of 5 is 5 modulus of minus 5 is 5 modulus of 1 is 1 modulus of minus 1 is 1 so it's the distance is the magnitude so this is nothing but the magnitude of the vector magnitude of the vector i can also write it as a b arrow mark with modulus or i can also write it as modulus p vector like this okay any of these things means modulus i can also just write p without the bar i can also write a b without the bar so when bar is not there it becomes the magnitude when bar is there then it becomes with the direction so it is a vector quantity is that clear with the bar without the bar what is the difference with the bar but with modulus again it will become magnitude if there is only bar it will become vector bar with modulus or no bar then it will become magnitude clear understood everyone very good yes we'll be doing questions also Sharmila awesome guys I have a question for all of you is this correct is this correct okay champa's champa's velocity champa's velocity is imagine I tell you champa's velocity is equal to right 5 kilometers per hour in the southeast direction is this right way of writing champa's velocity yes or no guys yes or no come on put it up in the chat box yes or no just type it out definitely it is correct because velocity is a vector quantity velocity my dear warriors it, this one is a vector quantity and you can see over here this is your magnitude information and this one over here is your directional information but if I say Champa's velocity is equal to just 5 kilometers per hour, then it is not correct because then where is the direction? Where is the direction? And I'm asking you the velocity. So this will be a wrong way of writing. Guys, this will be a wrong way of writing. This is not correct. Do not do this. So I'm putting a cross over here. But if I ask you, if I ask you, the Champa's champa's speed champa's speed that means i am basically asking you the magnitude the modulus the magnitude then is it right for me to say just five kilometers per hour then is it right for me to say just five kilometers per hour then it is fine so see what is asked in the question sometimes uh, you do not understand the difference between the vector and the scalar quantity you can make mistakes by unnecessarily missing the direction or unnecessarily writing the direction when it was not required for scalars no need of direction for vectors you need both you cannot miss any one of them keep this in mind great so let's see if you can solve some of the questions which are coming up on your screen which of the following is not a vector quantity which of the following is not a vector quantity i want everybody spamming the answers in the chat box some of you are really quick about this very good uh Shatal, satakshi very good tanya very good Vedanjani, very good oh my god now we can see the spam coming through awesome awesome the answer is speed torque is a vector there is a direction displacement is a vector it has a direction velocity is a vector it has a direction speed only you tell me the magnitude that is more than sufficient awesomeness proud of you my dear warriors moving on to the next question which of the following is a scalar quantity which of the following is a scalar quantity the first option says energy the second option says work the third option says power the fourth option says all of the above or fourth option says all of the above come on my dear students d4 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 
डॉक्टर एग्जैक्टली एंड एम्स डेली टू एंड ऑल ऑफ दब एक्टली विच आर दॉलोइंग स्केलर क्वांटिटी एनर्जी आई डोंट केयर अबाउट द डायरेक्शन वर्क यू डू वर्क आई डोंट केयर वेदर यू डू इट इन नॉर्थ और इन साउथ राइट पावर अगेन डज नॉट मैटर आई एम very powerful or i am my engine is having so much of power in this direction i don't care just tell me how much watts so all of the above all of them are scalar quantities proud of you my dear students moving on to the next question a vector is not changed if a vector is not changed if come on my dear students a vector is not changed if it is rotated multiplied direction is made opposite it is slid parallel to itself it's a slid parallel to itself come on my dear students what do you think i feel i feel that all the options in these particular questions have the same correct answer option d again very good it is slid parallel to itself it will not change i take a vector and i just put it here direction is same magnitude is same whether i slide it here and keep it all these are the same vectors in fact that brings me to the point that brings me to the point the different properties and the types of vector the different properties the different properties of vectors guys the different properties of vectors the first one being equal vectors equal vectors when do i say that two vectors are equal when do i say that the two vectors are equal imagine there is a vector like this and imagine there is another vector somewhere over here like this i can say this vector a and this vector b are equal this vector a is equal to this vector b if magnitude of a and magnitude of b is same that is basically a bars modulus is b bars modulus this is one and the same thing guys when i skip the bar it means the magnitude when i skip the bar it means the magnitude and and not just that the direction is same direction is basically what guys the same then it is said to be equal vectors the next thing you have is negative vector the next thing that you have is a negative vector guys what is the meaning of negative vector what is the meaning of the term negative of a vector imagine i have a vector like this this is a bar i have another vector exactly opposite but of the same length but of the same length so guys a bar is negative of b bar if if the magnitude of a is equal to the magnitude of b is equal to the magnitude of b and direction is and the direction is opposite the direction is what guys opposite is that clear very good that is then said to be negative of a vector it's exactly just to to turn it upside down that's all so this was equal vector this was negative vector the next one is about talking about parallel not parallel and all those things parallel anti parallel anti parallel and not parallel many students many coaching institutes do not teach this and students get confused when there are words in the question paper and you do not know what it exactly means imagine guys there is a vector here like this there is another vector over here like this let's say all this a bar let's say this is b bar let's say this is c bar let's say this is maybe d bar a bar d bar b bar c bar okay these are vectors out of this my dear warriors a vector and d vector are parallel to each other that means directions are same so a vector is basically parallel to b vector because the directions are same because the directions are same then it is said to be parallel everybody gets this cool but if you notice but my dear warriors if you notice a vector and b vector or d vector and b vector directions are exactly opposite exactly opposite so they are anti parallel so a vector is anti parallel 
to basically your oh sorry why did i say a vector parallel to b vector my bad guys this was supposed to be d vector not b my bad this was supposed to be d vector not b a vector and d vector are parallel to each other a vector and b vector are anti parallel to each other a vector and b vector are anti parallel to each other same way when d vector is also anti parallel to b vector d vector is also anti parallel to b vector because the directions are the directions are opposite what is it the directions are opposite and lastly my dear warriors lastly my dear warriors what can you say about a and c they are not in the same direction they are not even in opposite direction so a vector and c vector are not parallel to each other are not parallel same thing you can say b vector and c vector are not parallel same thing you can say d vector and c vector are not parallel because none of their directions match either in the same or in the opposite direction now do you understand now do you understand very good so this is the difference between parallel not parallel and anti parallel vectors next important thing that we are going to learn is basically null vector null null means guys what is the meaning of null null means waste null means waste zero nothing <laughs> okay so if i tell you my dear students that a vector is null vector is null vector then it just means that the magnitude of a or basically a is equal to zero that's it you can just show it like a point you can just show it like a point okay there is no length so the length of that particular vector is zero that's all that's the meaning of null vector okay clear simple moving on moving on unit vector guys unit vector the name only tells you everything unity well like, sir unity means many people know yeah that is fine that is in english but in mathematics in physics unity unit is one so exactly a vector whose magnitude is one vector with magnitude vector with magnitude equals to 1 so i can say that if a bar's modulus is 1 then then it implies a bar is an unit vector a bar is an unit vector as simple as that if i know that there is a vector whose magnitude is already 1 then might as well write it with a special symbol usually Whenever we have to specify vectors, let's say P vector, B vector, C vector, I put P with a bar or C with a bar or D with an arrow mark like this. Instead of writing it this way, if it is a unit vector, just put it like this P cap or P hat. It automatically means, what does this symbol mean? It's a unit vector already. So if I take the modulus of this, if I take the modulus of this, what will be the answer, my dear warriors? If you put a cap, if you put a hat, it becomes unity vector. That's it. So the modulus makes it one. Then. Exactly. Very good. Awesome. Why is current a scalar? Because it has magnitude and direction. Sandhya, it does not follow the laws of vector addition. Fine, you have direction. But if you add or treat it like a vector and uh, solve the problems, you will not get any of the answers. So they do not follow the laws of vector addition. That is the main problem, right? All right, moving on now. Moving on now to what is vector addition? What is vector addition? Guys, I have a simple question for all of you. I have a simple question for all of you. Let's see how many of you can answer this. Can... 2 plus 2 be 4? I'm like, sir, what are you teaching? Don't worry. Can 2 plus 2 be 4? You're like, sir, 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay, fine. Can 2 plus 2 be 0? Can 2 plus 2 be 0? You're like, what is sir talking about? 2 plus 2. Yes, sir, 4, it is not 0. Then I have another question. Can 2 plus 2 be 2? 
I will be like, what nonsense is this? Sir, please don't teach such things. My younger brother, younger sister is watching this video with me. And he is barely in second or third standard. And he is barely learning to add a 2 and 1 and 3. And now you are telling me 2 plus 2 is 2? My answer to this is yes, this is possible. If they are vectors. If they are vectors. Scalars, no. Vectors, yes. If this is like a vector, this is vector, 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 vector. Yes, then it is possible. Like, sir, how? This is crazy. I didn't know this is possible. So guys, let's learn the true meaning of vector addition. Now I know you guys are all interested and all charged up. The meaning of vector addition is, is adding, okay, adding the effects of both magnitude, magnitude as well as direction magnitude as well as direction of the vectors so that you get something called as the net or basically the resultant vector resultant vector how is this different from scalar addition example if i have mass 1 is equal to 2 kg if i have mass 2 as 3 kg then I these masses are scalars so when I add m1 and m2 what I get is basically 5 kg I have added 2 and 3 to get 5 that's all I have added 2 and 3 to just get 5 right I think that 5 was looking like a 6 anyways so 5 kg this is scalar addition this is basically scalar addition scalar addition now if I tell you over here, if I tell you over here, force 1 is, force 1 is 20 Newton. Force 1 is 20 Newton. Force 2 is 20 Newton. Now if I ask you, what is the net force? What is the net force? My dear four years, if you say 20 plus 20 is 40, you will get one tight slap. If you say 20 plus 20 is 40, you will get one tight slap. Is force a scalar or a vector? Is force a scalar or a vector? Hello, Gopika. Yes, is it a vector or a scalar? It's a vector. So it will be illegal for me to write it like this. So I need to put a bar, bar. 20 Newton, you need to tell me in what direction. Let's say I tell you it is in the east direction. In the east direction. Let's say this is in the west direction. What does vector addition say? Adding the effects of both magnitude and direction. So what do you think? 20 newtons east, 20 newtons west, 20 newtons east, 20 newtons west. What is the total effect? I think this will be 0 newton. Basically, it's a null vector. So that's what it is going to be. Nothing. They will cancel each other out. Exactly. So now do you believe 2 plus 2 can be 0 in vectors? Do you believe 2 plus 2 can be 0 in vectors? 2 plus 2 can be 2 also, 2 plus 2 can be something else also. It depends on the direction. It depends on the direction. Yes, Darwin, now I will tell you for any other direction. Very good. So over here, what have I done is basically, you know, this F bar net is F1 bar plus F2 bar f1 bar that means take into account the direction and f1 tells you take into account the magnitude also both have to be accounted for you cannot discount them you cannot forget about the direction as well as the magnitude so in general i can say c vector is basically a vector plus b vector this is how you write it this is how you write it. This is the resultant or the net vector. A and B are the vectors whose magnitudes and directions need to be considered. Now, whenever you want to add vectors, there are multiple ways of adding them. How do you basically add vectors? How do you basically add vectors? Look at this, guys. Very important chart. This will help you decide how you want to add them. 
I will divide it into two parts. Okay, the first one being the geometrical, the geometrical way. First one being the geometrical way. Here you have analytical way. Analytical means calculation. Analytical means calculation. You have to do something. Numbers. You have to play with the numbers. Yep. In geometrical, depending on whether you want to add two vectors or more than two vectors, there are two ways. For two vectors, there is one way. For more than two or more than two. Basically, there is another method. So when you have two vectors, you generally have something called as the triangle law or you have the parallelogram law. That is what it is. Triangle law or the parallelogram law. When you have more than two vectors, then you have something called as the law of polygon. So polygon law. Polygon law. Is that okay? I will tell you what each one of them is. But for now, just understand this flow chart. In analytical, what are the ways? In analytical, what are the ways? If you have only two vectors, if you have only two vectors, then there is a formula which I'm going to give you, which is root of, you know, a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta. So that formula is what you're going to use, a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta. But the moment you have more than two, two or more, two or more vectors then what you use is basically resolution resolution components components basically your i j k cap method i cap j cap k cap method so that's what you will generally use when case of two or more vectors in case of analytical method is that clear i am pretty sure none of the teachers would have given you this mind map before this so this mind map is very very important two vectors if i have to add two vectors which are the only possible ways guys if i have to add two vectors which are the only possible ways triangle law parallelogram law this correct generally you will use these methods if there are more than two vectors three four five six seven then you will use either polygon method or you'll use the resolution method i will teach you all of them i will teach you all of them Okay, I will teach you all of them. You will see answer will be the same. It doesn't really matter. So let's start. Let's start guys one by one. Let's start one by one. Okay, so usually triangle and polygon are very similar. Even triangle and parallelogram are very similar. You will see why. Look at this triangle law. Triangle law. Imagine I have to take this vector which is vector A and I have to take this vector which is vector B and I have to find a vector C which is vector A plus vector B. What you need to do, take any of these vectors, doesn't matter. Let's say this vector, slide it. Remember when you slide a vector, it does not change. You can slide it anywhere. So let's say I put that vector A over here. This is vector A, everybody fine. Now you take the vector B. Now you have two options, whether you want to put it here or whether you want to put it here. You started here, you went in this direction. Continue, go with the natural flow. So continuing, you will go in the direction of B. You will take that vector B over here like this. Tail, head, tail, head. Natural order of events. Do you see now, you have two sides of a triangle, there is a missing side. So now what do you do, my dear students? You just start from the very beginning and you go to the very end. So start from here and go till here. This is the completion of the triangle and that also gives you the net vector. Is that clear, my dear students? Is that clear, my dear students? Some of you will be like, sir, what if I take B first? Okay, no issues, guys. Let's say I took vector B first. Let's say I took vector B first, then I take vector A, okay, slide it, I start here, end here, so I should start from here and I should go over here, right? So this is basically your vector A, correct? So the missing side of the triangle is over here and I draw it like this. I started from here, very start, this is the very end, so this will be my vector C. Don't you see C is the same? 
डोंट यू सी सी इज द सेम एवरी वन वेरी गुड सो कैन आई से ए बार प्लस बी बार इज सेम एज बी बार प्लस ए बार अग्री और डिस अग्री वॉट इज दिस लॉ दिस इज कॉल्ड एज कम्यूटेटिव लॉ कम्यूटेटिव लॉ गाइस कम्यूटेटिव लॉ दैट मीन्स ऑर्डर डज नॉट मैटर फॉर एग्जाम्पल योर मॉम टेल्स गो ब्रिंग दिस बनानाज एंड पोटेटोज एंड टोमेटोज फ्रॉम द शॉप गो बच्चा ब्रिंग टोमेटोज एंड पोटेटोज एंड दिस बनानाज फ्रॉम द शॉप एंड यू आर लाइक फर्स्ट लेट मी प्ले then i will go by the bananas and the apples and the potatoes and tomatoes well, how does it matter first i will play then i will buy her mom will be like no first you buy then you uh, then you go and play then if you argue with your mom that it doesn't matter whether i play first and then go or first i go and then play it doesn't matter first let me play your you will get one tight slap so that is not commutative guys that is not committed to you have to do first what your mom has told you have to go by potatoes then you sit and play correct or no correct or no very good why don't c vector continues because that's how it is defined bachcha that is the law all right that is how you will go naturally don't ask me question like sir why did you go from here to here only why did you not come back that is how it has been found out to be when you add vectors when you find the resultant of it if i go into the deep theory it will take me very long lecture guys all right chalo so understand you just go with the flow i start it's very natural also no just imagine you start from here go here and then you continue from here and go here will you say your total displacement is from here to here or from here to here obviously you will say you started from here you went here this is my total displacement that's how it works cool yeah moving on now to the parallelogram law moving on now to the parallelogram law guys again i have been given two vectors let's say this is vector a let's say this is vector b i want to add them and to get i have to get vector c basically i have to get vector c which is nothing but a vector plus b vector using parallelogram law take any of the vectors let's say i take vector a guys let's say i take vector a okay fine take vector b but this time do not put where b a ends do not put b where a ends in fact start from the same point start from the same point the moment you start from the same point remember it is parallelogram law the moment you start where you end you started b where a ends then it is triangle law here you start from the same point now make a parallelogram so basically it's a quadrilateral where opposite sides are parallel to each other do you see that do you see that my dear students now oops what is this hmm now you started from here start the final vector resultant vector also from here and continue along the diagonal continue along the diagonal this will be your vector c this will be your vector c everybody clear awesomeness awesomeness oh by the way guys remember at 7:30 i'll be giving you a break for 10 to 15 minutes that time uh, wazim sir will make a special announcement for all the students who are not yet a part of avengers batch so make sure you attend that 5 to 10 minutes live class which wazim sir will conduct right so that time i'll be giving you guys a break before we move to the next part great moving now ahead do you also notice one more interesting thing that if you look at this parallelogram if you actually look at this parallelogram if i tell you this is a vector and this is b vector and then you tell me sir this is your c vector which is the diagonal don't you notice guys don't you notice guys this b is the same as this side so this is b vector if you just look at the top part it looks like the triangle so it's actually triangle law if you look below this is b vector if you take a over here this is basically your a vector so b vector plus a vector is c vector so this is again triangle law so it's just playing around with those uh, arrow marks 
So whether you start it from the same point or whether you start where you end decides whether it is triangle or whether it is parallelogram law. Is that clear my dear warriors? Everybody? Very good. Very good. Awesomeness. Awesomeness. Now the next concept and that is basically your polygon. What is the meaning of polygon? You know, there was a joke saying that there was once a student who was very chalu. Then the teacher got very angry. He got fed up and he told, listen, you know, circle is a polygon. And the student was like, yeah, really, sir? Yes, circle is a polygon. Find the vertex, find one corner of that circle. Intelligent student spent his time finding that corner or that vertex in that circle. And uh, legend has it, all right, the legend has it that the kid is still finding that corner and the teacher is at peace teaching other students. So, polygon, guys. Polygon, polygon law, polygon law. Quadrilateral is a polygon, pentagon is a polygon, hexagon is also a polygon, basically multiple sides. That's all right. Correct. No, no, not four, five, six, anything. It could be anything. So guys, you tell me the vectors like this A bar, B bar, uh, C bar. Okay. Then let's say D bar. These are the vectors. I want to add all of them. So I want to find A bar plus B bar plus C bar plus D bar. And I want to find their net resultant R bar. R is the resultant. What do you do? It's basically triangle law extended. Extend the triangle law. That's it. So you start with A. You start with A. A is basically like this. Okay, you go like that. This is your A vector. Then you go to B. Slide, put it where A ends. Slide, put it where A ends. Okay, like this. So this is my B bar. Take the next vector C, put it where B ends. Okay, there is no space. So let me just first put B vector over here. C vector like this. This is your C vector guys. This is your C vector. Take D vector, put it where C ends. C ended here. So put your D vector like this. This is your D vector. Now start from the very beginning, very beginning, go to the very end. So basically like this basically like this that is your resultant vector that is your resultant vector that's all Srinivas I'm a master of bad jokes also good jokes though you have comedians no stand-up comedy see if I wish to crack good jokes then I would not be teaching no I would be in stand-up comedy somewhere that's why I'm here now okay I crack very bad jokes so please that is my talent useless talent it is what is your useless talent? Please let me know. Anyways, so coming back over here, you can change the order. Don't think, sir, what if I take B first? Are, it doesn't matter. It's not commutative. Don't worry about it. Also remember one more thing. Also remember one more thing. If by chance you're adding one vector, adding another vector, adding another vector, adding another vector, adding another vector, it comes like this. Then you will be like, ha, huh, the resultant is this one. This is your resultant vector. Then again, you take another set of vectors. Let's say one vector is here, then another vector is here, then another vector is here, another vector is here, another vector is here. Last vector comes back where the first vector ended. Then you will be like, what is missing, sir? What is missing? Nothing is missing. So what you will have is basically null vector, null vector. So if all the vectors when you join them head tail head tail head tail head tail head tail and you come back to the same point nothing is remaining it becomes a null vector very good awesomeness Srinivas's useless talent is studying very good talented fellows I like that okay so you guys learnt about all the different ways now now let me give you some basic questions on this let me give you some basic questions on this i'm pretty sure you're all enjoying this and if you have not yet subscribed to the unacademy neat english channel guys please do that and number two if you have still not liked the session guys you are not thankful to the teachers around you you're not thankful to the youtube channels that you are learning from go ahead first of all smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button right away right now next thing guys let's see the questions on this so let's take up an example over here imagine i tell you 
draw draw resultant r which is a bar plus b bar and a bar perpendicular to b bar this is first question and here i have the second question right over here okay draw draw a bar plus b bar is the resultant and the resultant is perpendicular to a bar these are two different problems let's try to solve both of them and see what is exactly different so first of all in this particular problem a bar plus b bar is r bar so let me just draw a bar and i know a is perpendicular to b a is perpendicular to b great so the resultant my dear warriors will be basically like this resultant my dear warriors will be basically like this everybody gets this completing the triangle and i know the angle between them is 90 degree if i ask you to use pythagoras theorem won't you say r square is a square plus b square r square is a square plus b square so r is root of value of a square and value of b square that is what the value of the resultant will be correct yes or no similarly over here if i ask you to draw i know that yes one of the vectors is perpendicular to the other vector so what i will do what i will do i will just draw a right angle triangle i do not know which vector is what i will take care of it i just know r is perpendicular to a let's say this is r this is a now i need to think about the different possibilities think about the different possibilities will r be like this will a be like this will r be like this a be like this or will r be like that a be like this or will r be like this a b uh, i don't know like this so try to think guys what should be the right way of choosing the arrow marks because i know a vector and b vector naturally this will be b vector a vector and b vector gives you r vector definitely definitely i should go like this then i should go like this i go like this and then i go like this guys then i will definitely get this particular resultant vector then i'll get this particular resultant vector and in this case won't i say b square is a square plus a square plus r square so won't r square be b square minus a square so won't r be root of b square minus a square everybody agrees or disagrees everybody disagrees or agrees let me know understood how to solve the problem i know this was not asked i am telling you the difference i am just finding the value just extra the problem ended here and here that was the only problem but this part and this part i just did it to show you what is different in this question remember the resultant can be anything it could be b plus a b minus a a square plus b squares root b square minus a square root it could be so many different things got it units and measurement is already done it's already done please watch the playlist it's already there i think i've conducted some two three classes on that it's live and it's there on the past videos or past live section all right moving on guys to the next part moving on to the next part very good let's see if you guys can solve this resultant is a vector plus b vector and magnitude of r vector is magnitude of a vector is magnitude of b vector first thing is draw it second thing is second thing is the angle between the vectors the angle between the vectors what is it draw it and also show the angle between the vectors interesting guys look at this r's value a's value and b's value is same can you guys think what kind of a diagram geometry will it be post it in the chat section guys right away right now i need to start with a go to b get the resultant all the three sides of the triangle are same all the three sides of the triangle are same i don't think it's a pythagoras problem i don't think it's a right angle problem i feel that this is 
purely an equilateral triangle this will be a vector this will be b vector and what i am going to get is this particular vector which is your resultant yes this is an equilateral equilateral triangle definitely and all the angles internally are 60 degrees we know that this is 60 this is 60 even this is 60 all of them are 60 degrees so many of you will say angle between a vector and b vector angle between b vector and c vector angle between c vector and a vector you will be like sir it is 60 60 60 but that is not the answer my dear warriors that is not the answer my dear warriors yes you can expect such questions bacha in neat you open the neat paper you will be surprised to see the kind of questions that is asked so going back over here i will tell you one important property of vector that is angle between vectors how do you find the angle between the vectors imagine imagine my dear students you are given this vector a imagine there is another vector b and you have been asked what is the angle between the two vectors now you will be confused right you will be like should i put a here and then b over here and then measure this angle or should i put uh, a here and b over here and then measure the angle or should i you know uh, take basically what is this a over here and then b over here and then measure the angle many of you are confused is this the angle or is this the angle or is this the angle the correct answer to this question is with the color only green ones are correct red one is wrong this is theta this is theta but this angle that you will measure will not be the correct angle in fact it will be 180 minus theta that is basically not the angle between the vectors so basically the vectors should be originating from the same point or they should be terminating that means their heads should be at the same point then when you measure the angle that is the correct angle so just to give you an example my dear students imagine if there are two vectors like this if there are two vectors like this and let's say this angle is 120 degrees remember it's not joint from the same point tails or heads so slide them so that the angles can be measured easily slide this vector so that the tails start from the same point so it will basically look like this and now i know if this is 120 degrees this will be 60 degrees and this is the correct angle so the angle between the two vectors is 60 degrees understood understood very good clear -o? perfecto now if i go to this particular problem guys where is it where is it where is it here can you guys see r vector and a vector start from the same point r vector and a vector start from the same point i think here this was uh, resultant vector mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep so this was basically b vector and r vector and angle between r vector and a vector so guys r and a start from the same point so this should be the angle so r and a so yes this is 60 degrees r and b r and b end at the same point r and b end at the same point so whatever is the angle should be correct r and b so this should be also 60 degrees a and b no this is starting this is ending this is starting this is ending head tail no slide it so when you slide that angle will be 120 sorry 120 because it will be 180 minus 60 so basically this will be 120 degrees because when you write a bar over here and you slide b bar over there then you will notice this is the correct angle which is 120 degree is that clear so many students write it as 60 60 60 which is a wrong answer it is actually 120 60 60 perfect oh, amazing oh guys moving on so you guys are loving vector addition huh you guys are loving vector addition very good so next question for all of you next question for all of you 
the magnitude the magnitude of resultant of two vectors is maximum is maximum when 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 a bar and b bar are dash and it is minimum and it is minimum when a bar and b bar are dash what is going to come in that fill in the blank is what you need to tell me you take two vectors add them and the resultant is maximum when and the resultant is minimum when that's the question come on my dear students yes sir, jyoti i'll be teaching you vector subtraction also hmm come on mohammed saying 180 and 0 i think it is exactly opposite but chalo come on my dear warriors maximum so if you take one vector here and the other vector here or you take one vector here and the other vector here or when you take this vector here and this vector here or should you take this vector here and this vector here or should you take one vector here and the other vector back like this i feel that the resultant will be maximum in this particular case this is the maximum this is the max value of the resultant because here the resultant will become smaller here it will become even smaller here it will become even smaller here it will be the least in fact this is the minimum value so guys here the angle between them is zero degree here this vector and this vector are opposite to each other so here the angle is basically 180 degrees so the correct answer to this particular question my dear students what will it be it is maximum when a and b are parallel to each other because the angle is zero and when they are opposite that means anti-parallel anti-parallel to each other is that clear is that clear my dear warriors so when you stretch them out it will be maximum but when you start slowly turning that other vector back you will see when it becomes 180 this well value which is remaining is very less yes yes Dinesh whatever I'm teaching will be helpful for need as well as your boards uh, Siva when I slide the vector I do not change the value the length but I just keep the direction same so I slide it wherever I want without turning it just move it as it is when you had to find the angle remember the tail should match so for a vector and b vector I slid b vector here so it will look like this so that their tails will match for a and b okay if it is triangle law you start where the next vector ends if it is parallelogram law you start at the same point if it's polygon start where the next vector ends start where the next vector ends you continue that in order got it my dear students awesome moving on now to the next thing here is the question if the magnitude of the sum of two vectors is equal to the difference of their magnitude then the angle between the vectors is this is very straightforward question i want each and every student each and every neat warrior to answer this the magnitude of the sum of the two vectors is equal to the difference of the magnitudes then the angle between the two vectors is come on 0 45 90 180 Abhishek, the PDF will be uploaded later on in the Telegram channel. The link is there in the description box. Check it out. Was the correct answer D, is it? Let's have a look. Guys, the magnitude of the sum of two vectors. Sum of two vectors, that means A bar plus B bars magnitude is equal to the difference of their magnitudes. That means it is A minus B. A is the value and B is also the value. This can only happen in this particular case where you have one vector let's say a over here and the b vector is exactly opposite to it b vector is exactly opposite to it then what happens whatever is remaining that resultant that resultants value will be basically bigger vector minus the smaller vector so i think the angle over here you can see between a and b is 180 degrees is 180 degrees which is option d definitely a vector and b vector are anti-parallel correct if they were in the same direction then it would have maximum value 
So in fact, this diagram also makes it clear this maximum value is a plus b. The least value is whichever is bigger minus smaller. So I'll put the modulus sign. Positive difference it is called. I don't know which is big. So you put modulus symbol. Is that okay? Cool. Moving on to the next. Given that a plus b plus c is zero, three vectors, you add them, you get zero. Two are equal in magnitude and the third one is root two times the other vector. Then the angle between the vectors are given by. Think about it. Yes, I'll be covering all the chapters one by one, Bacha. Yes, uh, false hype. Uh, this class is completely free. In fact, this series is completely free. And uh, you will see in a week, you will have four classes generally. Uh, from me for physics then you will have two chemistry classes and one biology class right and this will continue and week by week we'll update the timetable in the community and in the telegram channel so this week i'm doing your uh, vectors before this i had done units and dimensions as well as some part of basic maths so watch those classes if you have missed that the correct answer for this particular question is option b i think hardly few people said that very good pg vijay very good a plus b plus c is a null vector means you take vector a you take vector b and you take vector c so it's a null vector this is a b c for example now if you notice two of them are equal in magnitudes let's say this vector and this vector are equal in magnitudes and this is root two times the other vector root two times the other side so my dear students if b is x c is also x then a is root 2x this can only happen if b and c are perpendicular to each other using pythagoras using pythagoras this will be root 2 times think about it x square plus x square will be root 2 root 2 times of x square root 2 times of x square guys x square plus x square is 2 x square so root 2 square is also 2 so this is valid so that means they are perpendicular to each other everybody gets this they are perpendicular to each other everybody gets this you can use Pythagoras so let me draw it again let me draw it again so one vector is here one vector is here one vector is here this vector is like this so they complete the polygon this is 90 this and this both are 45 45 each 45 45 each guys now whenever you have to measure the angle between two vectors make sure that they join together their tails or their heads tails or their heads not like this not like this or like this tails or heads should be together if you notice this is head this is tail not join so make them join together angle between this vector and this vector is 90 degree so one of the angle is 90 angle between this vector and this vector angle between this vector and this particular vector my dear students this is the angle which is 135 degree same thing angle between this vector and this vector angle between this vector and take this vector over there take this vector over there what will be this angle it will be again 135 degrees so 135 135 90 which is option b 135 135 90 which is option b why not treat it like isosceles triangle jodhi tell me can a right angle triangle be isosceles yes definitely and that is a special triangle that is 90 45 45 that kind of triangle is a right angled isosceles triangle where the two perpendicular sides are equal this side equals to this side not all right angles are isosceles not all isosceles are right angles. There is only one triangle which is right angle and isosceles. And that is the one. 90, 45, 45. Okay. Very good. All right, Srinath. I am a magician. Definitely I am a magician. Because I change the marks of the students and recently also you would have seen that interview of the student uh, who got 170 marks out of 180 in need physics in the first attempt guys so i want you guys to stay with me and that guy who used to watch my youtube classes that's it so i can't even imagine what would have happened or what will happen to so many students if they are in my batch also in the avengers batch which i am teaching so guys stay tuned keep watching consistently i guarantee you 170 180 marks out of 180 guys in need physics trust me this is possible
cool so let's go ahead let's go ahead to vector subtraction see guys i did not know this till i entered fourth or sixth standard that subtraction is addition only subtraction is addition only but of negative numbers i'll tell you what when i say when i say 5 minus 2 it means you take the number plus 5 and you add the number negative 2 to it so subtraction is basically addition of a negative number is that making sense to you subtraction is basically addition with a negative number that's all same logic i will use it over here also for vectors if you know if you know addition you automatically learn subtraction my dear warriors so if i write a vector minus b vector it's as good as saying it is a vector plus negative of b vector negative of b vector same way if i say b vector minus a vector it will be b vector plus negative of a vector just to show you how they look observe guys if i have two vectors if i have let's say one vector is here like this and let's say another vector is here like this i want to subtract them a bar minus b bar i want to do a bar minus b bar okay i know a bar is over here i know a bar is over here b bar is like this how will be negative b bar negative b bar will be exactly opposite but of the same magnitude so take negative b bar negative b bar will be exactly like this this is negative b bar and place it over here and place it over here guys this is minus b bar whatever will be left whatever will be left over here that remaining side using triangle law that would be your a vector minus b vector is that clearly understood is that clearly understood yes the class started at six tanya if you miss that polygon law just can you rewind it again and if you still have doubts you can always come to our telegram channel my telegram channel is also there j need captain stress where students keep on discussing doubts okay so it's free open to all make sure you are in that and in this particular case my dear students b minus a take b vector Achha. let's take b vector as it is i'm not going to do any changes there negative of a vector negative of a vector will be like this negative of a vector will be like this take it as it is and put it over here this is negative of a vector so whatever is the remaining side that would be your b vector minus a vector is that clear is that clear now i have a question for all of you is is b vector minus a vector the same as a vector minus b vector what do you think should i put equal to or not should i put equal to symbol or not definitely it is not equal to it definitely it is not equal to it but yes it is negative of this i it is definitely negative of this so b bar minus a bar is actually is actually negative of a bar minus b bar magnitude wise they are same direction wise they are opposite so definitely i will say that they are not commutative that means order matters order matters right whether you write a first or b first if you change the order it is a completely different thing a bar minus b bar is here b bar minus a bar is this side so there are two completely different things if you change the order hence they are not at all commutative very good now that you understand vector subtraction guys okay we're going to solve some questions all right just one second hmm. but before that i think i need to give you one more formula let me go back and give it to you over here right so remember out of all these methods that i have told you i am done with triangle law triangle law done you end where the next one starts parallelogram law start at the same point complete the polygon sorry complete the parallelogram and then mark the diagonal polygon law keep on going in order complete the polygon and then fill up the missing side 
all these three methods done let's go to this method and then after some time to this particular method everybody ready with me everybody ready with me it is my first class how i am recover past class jyoti kumar you can do one very simple thing bachcha in the past live classes session different sections are there right so just go there bachcha that's all just go there like when you are watching this class right you can do it later on also right you go over here and you will see all the previous classes and if you want just go to the playlist that's the best option that you have so go to the playlist part and you will see um, where is it i think there will be a physics class 12th playlist physics class 11th playlist so just use that playlist you will definitely get everything that you need bachcha all right let's go to this method let's go to this method all right so this was that all right what is the analytical way to add two vector vectors analytical way to add two particular vectors okay so for two vectors what is the analytical method that means formula method it goes like this if i have vector a and if i have vector b if i have vector b and let's say i join them together all right so let's say i join them together like this maybe using parallelogram law this way and i know that the angle between them is theta then i can find the resultant very easily i can find the resultant very easily guys so let's say the resultant is this one resultant is this one the resultant's value is given by the resultant's value is given by don't worry about the derivation just look at the formula you should know how to apply it a square plus b square plus 2 ab cos theta what is theta angle between the two vectors angle between the two vectors by definition right so then this is going to give you the resultant also not just that guys the resultant will make certain angle with a the resultant will definitely make some angle with a or let's say with b so if i call this angle as alpha resultant making an angle alpha with a then the tan of alpha is given by is given by b sin theta divided by a plus b cos theta a plus b cos theta is that clear everyone is that clear everyone yes so this will be tan is tan of alpha is b sin theta upon a plus b cos theta keep this in mind okay all right no it is a total fee shrinath whatever batch fees that we charge it is not a monthly fee it is a complete year's fee so when i think the batch price is something around 14 or 15000 so it is for the entire year till you write the neat examination bachcha okay moving on guys moving on so this is very important formula now this is when you add two vectors do you know that the same formula also exists when you actually subtract the two vectors when you subtract the two vectors so analytical way again analytical way for two vectors subtraction for two vectors subtraction so imagine imagine this is vector a this is vector b the angle between them is theta but you want to find a bar minus b bar so you first of all take the negative vector you take minus b vector then you complete the parallelogram and then you see what is the resultant then you see what is the resultant let's say this is your resultant so r bar if it is a bar minus b bar then the value of r my dear warriors is very similar it is still given to be a square plus b square and you have 2ab cos theta but the main difference is you put a minus sign so for vector addition it is plus for vector subtraction it is minus that's all where is vectors included it is included generally in motion, uh, motion in a plane that's where you learn little bit about vectors and some part of vectors you again learn it in work some part of vectors you again learn it in torque so the ncert flow is one of the worst flow for 11th standard guys the one of the worst flow for your 11th standard they have mixed up all the chapters each and every place 
suddenly circular motion will start in motion in a plane suddenly circular motion will come in you know newton's laws suddenly impulse will come in newton's laws not in collision suddenly you know so many other things like scalar product again comes around say in work vector product comes in torque hc verma and dc bandia and other books they keep it simple vectors separate chapter basic maths separate chapter units and dimensions separate motion in 1d means 1d motion in 2d means 2d circular motion separate so that order of the chapters you need to please check it out guys okay it depends from book to book is that clear ha huh. yes yes Srinath, uh, some random people will say random things. So there are a lot of people who do not want uh, students to become doctors. So they run all these false campaigns. They uh, call people, they scam people or sometimes they will put negative comments. Don't get fooled into all these people. So there are a lot of haters just like we have a lot of lovers, a lot of uh, people who trust in us. So guys, understand you need to believe in the right piece of information. So there are more than 1000 students who are right now enrolled in the Avengers batch. I can make you uh, talk to anyone and I'm pretty sure they will tell you everything honestly about the batch, good or bad. And trust me, we are that bunch of Avenger teachers who will make sure that we stick around till the end just like we did for NEET 2023 because we want true doctors we want honest people we don't want uh, you know scams and uh, rumors and unnecessary information not the hype but the truth that is what i believe in that is what the avengers believe in trust me on that correct okay yes yes definitely hisham moving on guys to a question which i'm going to put up on your screen Okay, let's see if you guys can solve this and I want you guys to give the answer instantaneously, instantaneously, modulus A bar plus B bar, that means the addition of two vectors value is the same as their vector subtraction value, is the same as their vector subtraction value. Then what is the angle, what is the angle between a bar and b bar what do you think is the angle between them come on try this out within one two max three lines you'll get the answer instantly you can give me the answer guys in the chat box yes you get test papers to practice you get assignments to practice there is a separate avenger group it's a private shh, secret group which nobody can enter and we share the link everything you get exclusive material on the telegram channel all right so that is a separate thing Units and measurement already done, Manyatha, Manati, already done, already done, not as a marathon, but as separate classes. So you watch them together, it is marathon only. What will I do? Instead of those four classes, I will do it in one thing. So watch that recorded class, don't be after like, so I'll do it live, do it again. A plus B will be A plus B. If I tell it 10 times, recorded or live, it will be A plus B only. So guys, watch that recorded class in case you have missed it. Okay, 180. I think you guys are wrong, yeah? most likely what is the value of this what is the value of this it will be root of a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta what is the value of this it will be root of a square plus b square minus 2ab cos theta now basically these both are equal because the modulus means the magnitude of that resultant so root root cancels so I have a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab cos theta. Now do you see a square a square b square b square cancels. So 2ab cos theta is minus 2ab cos theta. Bring it over here. So 2ab cos theta plus 2ab cos theta is equal to 0. So this will become 4ab cos theta is equal to 0. But a and b are not 0. 4 is also not 0, so definitely cos theta is 0, whose cos is 0, obviously 90 degrees, so hence guys 90 degrees is the answer, many of you said 180 degrees, that is definitely the wrong answer, that is definitely the wrong answer, okay, moving on to another question coming up on your screen, a bar minus b bar is a bar's magnitude and b bar's magnitude, what is the angle between a and b, use the formula, trust me, you will get it use the formula trust me you will get it guys come on do this question do this question uh gayatri usually i'll keep it at six o'clock 
but if there is a very big chapter maybe i will try to start it at five o'clock but i know most of the schools end at 4 30 4 3 30 sometimes at 5 by the time you come back home relax everything maybe the time will be 5 4 30 5 30 so that's why i try to keep most of the classes at 6 unless i feel that there is something which i need to change and then i will inform you earlier okay everybody saying 90 is that so is that so let's try this out the magnitude of the vector subtraction is root of root of a square a square plus b square minus 2ab cos theta and that is equal to any of the vectors let's assume this as x say let's assume this as x so basically this will become x square plus x square minus 2 x into x cos theta is equal to x square sorry is equal to x is equal to x square both sides this will become 2x square minus 2x square cos theta is equal to x square correct now x square x square x square cancels this is 2 this is minus 2 cos theta this is 1 so 2 bring that 1 from here is equal to take that 2 over there so 2 cos theta 2 minus 1 is 1 so 1 is equal to 2 cos theta so basically my dear warriors what is the value of cos theta what is the value of cos theta bring that 2 below so it is half so what cos is half obviously 60 degrees so 60 degrees is the answer where is 60 degrees option c c for c for whom guys do you know it c for there's only one and only one answer and that is captain shreyas none other than that remember okay very good guys awesomeness now we will talk about resolution now we'll talk about resolution but i know that i think there is one small break which is needed and i think Kobazim sir might be coming live at this point of time for talking about an important announcement regarding our avengers batch so guys we'll take a 15 minute short break and i will return okay so just a 15 minute break and we will return Okay, see you guys very soon.
Uh, am I audible now? Am I audible now? Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for pointing it out. Am I audible right now? Yes, looks like I am audible now. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so guys, I was just saying ki, welcome to the vectors class. So uh, we have completed vectors and scalars. We have completed vector addition, vector subtraction. Now we'll go to resolution, IJK components and unit vectors. And then we'll go to vector product. And uh, you will have one physics, two chemistry and one biology class every week. These are detailed one shot marathons no skipping of topics and slowly we'll complete the portion in the next six to seven months this batch on youtube is completely free and remember if i if you want personal training from me Vazim sir hsp sir and ambika ma'am then you need to enroll in the avengers batch where we'll take care of you right so you have both the options out there in case you're short of money you can attend the youtube classes but if you can afford all right 14 15 thousand then i think you should get enrolled in the avenger batch apart from the youtube batch so let's get going guys let's start with resolution right some of you are asking what is the timing of the avenger batch it is usually from 10 o'clock usually my class is the first 10 to 11 30 1.5 hours each then uh, 12 o'clock one class then sometimes two o'clock then sometimes five o'clock so two to four classes per day it's not like all the four classes will be there every day so sometimes there could be two classes sometimes three classes sometimes four classes maximum by 6 30 you will be free sometimes you have long, long breaks so let's say only physics and chemistry classes there so from 10 to 11 30 and then 5 to 6 30 in between time again you'll get free sometimes you have three classes sometimes you have four classes so it changes from day to day you'll get the schedule so usually these are the timings and uh, you can also get the recordings after the class is over okay great great let's let's get to vector resolution guys now resolution resolution meaning splitting what is the meaning of it splitting split into parts like i have a cake and i split it into one part two parts three parts four parts so that is the meaning of resolution you cut it into multiple parts say for example say for example i have this particular vector v I have this particular vector V and I want to split it into two parts or I want to split it into multiple parts. If I know, if I know that this is the X axis, this is the Y axis, I can split it or resolve it into two very special parts. One part which is along the X axis one part which is along the y-axis how do i know exactly this one is the split part of the vector v along the x-axis just drop perpendiculars just drop perpendiculars how much i moved in x how much i moved in y to get the net vector just like saying just like saying i moved three kilometers east and some kilometers north some kilometers east some kilometers north so that is my total displacement so you basically basically tell me each and every value in different directions so that i can get the net vector quantity each of these smaller values are basically the resolved parts when you split what do you get when you split guys imagine you have something right and you split it basically you split it what do you guys get obviously you will get parts so you'll get one part here and you will get another part over here so these are basically your parts and they are also called as components what are they called components so what will this be called what will this be called this is the component or the part along the x-axis so i will call it vx this is the part or the component I split it into two parts. This is the component along y-axis. So I'm going to call it VY component. VY component. Is that clear everyone? Yes, the syllabus will be done on YouTube as well. Definitely. The Neat Avenger batch is from morning till evening batch with some sufficient gaps in between. 1.5 hours classes. Now, 
This is for vector in 2D. This is for vector in 2D. So, when you have a vector in 2D like this, I can split it up into two parts. One over here, one over here, right? One over here and one over here. Maybe this is Vx component. Maybe this is Vy component. I split it up such that they are perpendicular to each other and I can also say Vx square plus Vy square. What will it be equal to guys? Come on, you have to put it under the root so that you can see it is actually equal to this final vector, this resultant vector using Pythagoras. Nothing special about it. This is for vector in 2D, agree or disagree? Very good. Now, if it is vector in three dimension, then I would suggest draw a cuboid because it's the easiest to visualize in a cuboid. So when you have a vector in three dimension, usually drawing a cuboid helps. So let's see if I have some shapes over here. Maybe not so much. All right, no issues. So I'll just stick to my drawing. So guys, just imagine. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Okay, so this is a rough cuboid that I have drawn. Imagine guys, this is your, oops, this is your x-axis, this is your y-axis, and this is your z-axis. This is z, this is x, this is y. Are you able to visualize a cuboid? Are you able to visualize a cuboid? Now, if I draw a vector starting from here, till this point from one corner to the other corner so maybe it will go like this like this right it's not very straight not very straight but I'm just trying to draw it this is a vector which goes like this this vector can be split into so many parts one part over here one part over here that will be vz one part over here that will be vx one part over here that will be vy so three parts, Vz, Vx and Vy. So that will give me the net vector V or when I split the vector V, which is in three dimension, along the three beautiful axes, I get Vx, Vy and Vz. Isn't it crazy, right? What a visualization. Definitely Harish, I'm a blessing not just for you, but all the students who are sincere and who want to become a doctor. Trust me, I will be the God for you. I will be the teacher who will make sure that you get 170 or 180 marks in physics. So my dear warriors, can I say over here that just like for vectors in 2D, this vector V has a magnitude of Vx square plus Vy square in 2D. In 3D, what will change? In 3D, what will change? You will have Vx square you will have vy square but the extra term that you will have is the vz square that's it that's the only difference in 3d and in 2d so here you will have two terms squares under the root here you will have three guys square under the root that's the only difference my dear warriors great moving on now how do i identify these components let's try to play around with this how do I identify the components? Let's take few examples that will make it very, very clear. And these examples are so important and so much needs to be done about this. Many people just skip it, but I'm not going to skip it. So imagine guys, this is my vector in the first case. This is my vector in the second case. This is my vector in the third case. All right, let's draw more cases over here. And let's say, one more and one more okay so in this case my vector is here in this case my vector is here in this case my vector is here so these are the different vectors and I want to split it always think in which direction it is along what direction it is can I split it into two parts which is along this and along that that will make up that vector you can see this is in the first quadrant so most likely i'm going to split it up like this this way and this way 
so the x component is along positive x so can i say positive x component positive x component and the y component is also along positive y so can i say positive y component my dear warriors everybody with me it's like coordinates only positive x positive y as simple as that okay why in 3d we have vz because height length breadth three things three dimensions so that is the reason for that in 2d height length that's it or breadth length that's it so that's why two terms got it great in this case how will the components be one component will be here one component will be here what will this component be this will be negative x component this will be positive y component agree or disagree positive y negative x everyone with me in this case how will you split it split it into two parts one part is left side one part is downwards this is negative x this is negative y everybody with me follow me closely this vector split it into two parts see one part is going here one part is going here this is positive x and this is negative y guys perfecto look at this vector when i split it along x and y i don't have to it's already along y axis in fact the x component in this case is zero and there is only the y component positive y component that's it there is nothing in x it's not going in x what about this vector guys can you answer the, it in the chat box i hope you can see this yellow part i hope you can see that yellow part it is going towards the left yep in this case the y component will be zero but it has a negative x component negative x component understood oh, clear oh, how to split the vectors is this exercise making it clear what if i give you a slightly more complex problem because this is particularly going to be seen in newton's laws and other such chapters imagine this is my x-axis imagine this is my y-axis imagine this is my x-axis imagine this is my y-axis all right i'm just showing you some three four different scenarios and you have to figure it out just imagine imagine my dear students my vector my vector is for example in this particular direction imagine my vector is in this particular direction imagine my vector is let's say in this particular direction guys now how are you going to split it in each case observe carefully first situation first situation it's this side and this side it's in this fourth quadrant so obviously one component obviously one component will be the positive x component and this component it's opposite to the y-axis so what will it be guys it will be the negative y component agree or disagree understood or clear very good what about this one this can be split into two parts one component here and one component here this is opposite to y so it is negative y this is opposite to x so negative x component so this is negative x component correct same way over here there is nothing in x don't have to split anything so here the x component will be zero here the positive y component remains positive y component remains so no matter how i tilt the axis you now know how to split or resolve the vectors so now you know what is the meaning of resolution it means splitting when you split it you get parts which you call it as components so vector has multiple parts if it is in 2d two parts if it is in 3d then three parts i hope that is clearly 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 understood so these are all the formulas formulas this is for vector in three dimension this is for vector in two dimension so i have shown you multiple examples of how to split it now the obvious question in your head will be sir sir what is the value of each of these components i am coming to that observe now so i am coming to that guys but before that can you solve this question can you solve this question a person travels 10 kilometers north 20 kilometers east what will be the displacement from the initial point i want everybody 
to answer this particular question in the chat box. I want to see the spam coming through. I want to see the spam coming through. And if there is some person who has forgotten to attend the class, text them right away right now. If some person forgot that sir was going to come back after 15 minutes, text that person and call him back. All right, come on. Let's go with full energy, with full josh. And if you have not yet smashed the like button, do that right away, right now, without missing that, you know, uh, smashing that like button. Guys, you are not doing justice to the channel if you have not subscribed to the channel you're not doing justice to the channel okay so keep that in mind because these classes are for free and it's only because of your love and support that i'm coming over here or else i have no reason remember that okay option is d b c what is it guys the correct answer for this is b very good because you are going 10 kilometers north 20 kilometers east 10 kilometers north so this is 10 and 20 kilometers east. So this is my final displacement. So that final displacement will be root of 10 square plus 20 square. 10 you can take it outside. So it will be 1 plus 4. So it will be 10 root 5. Root 5 is 2.23. So that will be basically 10 into 2.2 something. So that will be basically 22. So 22.36 kilometers. Correct. So you can put the addition decimals so it comes out to be 236 so this will be also 22.36 kilometers is that clear everyone very good option b now let us let us play around with the resolution and the components so we are going to see that actually you can represent a vector using unit vectors you can represent a vector using unit vectors how to do that i'll come to it so for that Let's find the value of the components that I split. The magnitude of the components that I split or resolve a vector. If by chance, if by chance, I have this as my x-axis, this as my y-axis. Imagine, imagine my dear students, this is my vector. This is my vector which I need to split into two parts. One part is here. One part is here, the other part is here. This is Vx component, this is Vy component. Remember, V bar or Vx bar plus Vy bar is technically going to give you the total vector. Vx component and Vy component together gives you that uh, total vector V. Magnitude wise, if I don't put the bar, then it is just then it is just root vx square plus vy square. This is vectorally, this is magnitude wise. But what is the magnitude of each one of them? What is the value of each one of them? That depends on the angle. That depends on the angle. By chance, you take this angle as alpha. By chance, you take that angle with x axis as alpha. Then the x component then the x component will become v times cos alpha and the y component becomes v times sin alpha v times cos alpha v times sin alpha but but if you choose this angle let's say beta then the x component becomes v sin x component becomes v sin beta and the y component becomes v cos beta. Now you will be like, sir, I always get confused, sir, between cos and sine. I will tell you a trick. I will teach you a trick. The trick is very simple. What is the trick? The trick is very simple. Cos C. C stands for cos. C stands for closer. Closer. Bring them close. The closer component is cos. Observe, if I take alpha, which is the component closer to alpha? Is the y component closer or is the x component closer? x component is closer. So x component will be cos. When you take beta, y component is closer. So that is why y component will be cos. Simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy trick. So this is the trick guys. This is basically your trick to remember which one is cos, 
which one is sine shall we do the problem now so that you guys get a hang of it okay just imagine guys just imagine i'll do multiple problems now don't worry i'm going to make sure that this topic will get attached in your permanent memory after this class you will never ever say that i don't know vectors imagine i have a vector of magnitude 10 and this angle is 60 degrees so if i split it into components one component will be here one component will be here this will be x component this will be y component what do you think the x component will be this x component is far away from 60 but the y component that is close to 60 so that will be close means cos 10 cos 60 that means it will be 10 into half that means it will be 5 whereas the x component will now be 10 sine 60 that means it will be 10 root 3 by 2 that means it will be 5 root 3 that is the answer is that clear my dear students is that clear my dear warriors everyone with me let's do one more question over here imagine there is a vector like this there is a vector like this its magnitude is 20 magnitude is 20 and it makes 45 degrees over here it makes 45 degrees over here just like it was making 60 with something else so if i have to figure out the components my dear students one component will be here other component will be here this will be the y component but the y component is downwards negative y so it will be minus x component this way so definitely minus again do you understand why both the components are negative negative did you understand why both the components are negative negative everybody with me very good guys now what will i do oh closer to the angle is cos cos c close so this will be minus 20 cos 45 cos 45 is 1 by root 2 so minus 20 by root 2 you can rationalize this also later on this will be minus what is that value of the vector it is 20 and this will be sine 45 cos and sine 45 both are 1 by root 2 so 20 by root 2 with a negative sign that's it that's how you find components my dear warriors all right let's see if you guys can quickly tell me what is the x component and y component of this vector of this vector the length is let's say 17 units it's going down guys quickly tell me what is the x component and quickly tell me what is the y component x component and y component i want to see that in the answers what is the x component and what is the y component come on there is nothing in x obviously zero there is everything in y so it is magnitude wise 17 direction wise minus because it's opposite to the y-axis downwards right very good proud of all the conquerors out here guys i hope you know what you guys are called right all the students who are enrolled in our batch at anakanabi they are called as avengers you guys are called conquerors you are attending these youtube classes you are called the conquerors so be proud of that name and make sure that you conquer NEET 2024 or 2025 whichever you are aiming for because that name itself has what we stand for name itself has what is your ambition what should be your focus what should be your target keep this in mind guys all right moving on to one more question guys moving on to one more question come on guys I want everybody to solve this everybody to solve this 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 is your vector and let's say this is maybe i don't know um maybe say five units five units and this angle is basically 30 degrees so guys i want to split it up into two parts i want to split it up into two parts this is your positive x this is your positive y direction so let's split it up one component will go down like this one component will go down like this opposite to y so the y component will be negative opposite to positive x so x component is also negative this is closer to the angle closer to the angle so minus 5 cos 30 so it will be minus 5 root 3 by 2 
x component it will be nothing but 5 sin 30 because it is away so that means it will be minus 5 by 2 that is the answer understood is it clear everybody's head has this one last question guys so that i have confirmation that you guys have fully 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 understood this last question guys before we go on to unit vectors okay imagine a vector like this of magnitude 10 of magnitude 10 and let's say it makes an angle of 37 degrees with the x-axis let's split it up into two parts one part obviously will be along positive x so x component is definitely positive y component will be downwards so y component will definitely be negative everybody fine this angle is closer to the x component so this will be cos so 10 cos 37 cos 37 cos 37 guys is 4 by 5 is 4 by 5 so it will be nothing but 8 that will be 8 units this one it's far away so it will be 10 sin 37 using my trick so sin 37 is 3 by 5 so this will become 6 units with a negative sign that's all very good very good everybody with me so you should know the values of 30, 30 60 45 37 53 0 90 180 all these trigonometric ratios you should know if you have missed the basic maths class please watch that i'm not going to sit and teach basic maths trigonometry over here okay so that's your responsibility to check that particular lecture out all right so now that you understand about what is vector resolution and the components okay this was a very very important theory part by the way all right so this was very very important whatever i've given it over here okay including that trick how to split it into multiple parts now let's learn about unit vectors because that will be helpful in writing any vector unit vector remember anything like a cap b cap h hat right j hat so these are all unit vectors their magnitude their modulus is one their modulus is one correct now there are special unit vectors like in every class you always have these special people right special favorite people so like that there are special unit vectors guys do you know, know the name of those special students in unit vectors do you know the special name of the unit vector the special students come on what are their names yep this is let's say x-axis let's say this is y-axis and let's say this is your z-axis let's say this is your z-axis so the unit vector along x unit vector along x i will call it i cap i will call it i cap unit vector along y i will call it j cap or j hat unit vector along k i will call it basically k cap i j k those are the special unit vectors in x y z axis exactly remember magnitude of i cap is the same as the magnitude of j cap which is the same as the magnitude of k cap which is all one that's why they are unit vectors they are special vectors now what is the purpose of this unit vector what's the use of this unit vector i will come to that so my dear warriors imagine this imagine this there is a vector imagine there is a vector like this say okay and let's say the value is five units i can split five into two parts i can split five into two parts one part here one part here all right both are perpendicular all right one part here and one part here basically so if this is let's say four this is three units this is three units three is the y component four is the x component now I know along x the component is basically 4 along y the component is basically 3 I also know one thing unit vector along x is i cap unit vector along y is basically j cap so if I take i cap i cap i cap 4 times I will get this vector if I take i cap, i cap, i cap three times, I'll get the y component vector. So can I might as well say, can I might as well say that the x component 
is actually you take i cap i cap i cap four times that means it is four times of i cap it is four times of i cap and the y component take the j cap take the j cap how many times three times so it is basically three j cap so my dear warriors if i ask you what is the final vector the actual vector in itself that vector v in itself will be 4 i cap is also there 3 j cap is also there do not be stupid to add these two just put plus sign but it is not actually adding 4 and 3 it is 4 in this direction 3 in this direction so you cannot add 4 and 3 7 that is not 7 it is 4 square plus 3 square which is 5 square is that clear is that clear everybody everybody with me so my dear warriors the special vectors in x y z what are they called i cap j cap k cap like i told you before over here you can take any vector like you can take any vector and you can split it into parts or components if it is 2d two components if it is 3d three components and we did exercises on this how i split a vector into multiple parts right multiple parts i've shown you over here so when you split it into multiple parts it also makes natural sense that i can express it in terms of i can express it in terms of these unit special vectors so anything which is in x i can write some times of i cap anything in y i can write it as some times of j cap anything in z i can write it as some times of k cap is that clear my dear warriors so imagine i give you one more thing i give you one more thing let's say this is x axis this is y axis imagine there is a vector in this particular manner imagine there is a vector in this particular manner okay and let's say this component the x component is something let's say the y component is something do you think the x component will be positive or negative x component is along positive x so definitely positive y component along negative side so minus is that clear is that clear okay let's say this length is given to me this length is given to be seven units this is given to be let's say three units then what will i say along x it is seven times i cap i cap is a special vector i cap i cap i cap like that how many times seven times so that is why this is basically seven i cap this will be nothing but three j cap but in the negative side that's all so my dear warriors the actual vector which i want to represent won't it be simple seven i cap minus three j cap seven i cap minus three j cap is that understood everyone is that understood everyone if i ask you to visualize if i ask you to visualize a vector a which is minus 2 i cap minus 4 j cap how will you visualize it minus 2 i cap minus 4 j cap okay minus 2 means left side so it will have a value like this minus 2 i cap minus 4 means like this minus 4 j cap means like this so my actual vector guys won't it be this one won't it be this one this will be my actual vector a bar over here everybody understood this how to write draw visualize vectors using i j k symbols very good so manuja i have repeated it using different examples so that you understand now you can rewind back rewind back and understand anything else so whenever you want to express vectors in i cap j cap k cap you split it into components split it into parts and then solve the problem split it into parts and then solve the problem that's all see whether it is along positive or negative side okay and that's it give the signs appropriately if it is along x it is i cap if it is along y it is j cap if it is along z it is k cap now i have an interesting question what is v bars modulus in this case what is v bars modulus in this case just like if i ask you what is the magnitude in this case of this particular velocity or uh, sorry vector v if i ask you what is the magnitude of this particular vector you will be like ha huh, the length length will be pythagoras 
4 square plus 3 square 4 square 16 3 square 9 9 plus 16 25 root of 25 is just 5 which is the length of this right same way if I ask you what is this guy's length again you'll use Pythagoras so it will be nothing but it will be nothing but root of 7 square plus minus 3 square guys what is 7 square let's see how many of you have put up the answer square and root very good 49 and minus 3 is square is again 9 only so 49 plus 9 guys it's root of 58 root of 58 very good awesomeness if i ask you what is the magnitude of this particular vector guys magnitude of this particular vector what will your answer be come on think about it it will be root of minus 2's square plus minus 4's square 2's square is 4 4 square is 16 so it will be root of 20 which you can also write it as 2 root of 5 2 root of 5 everybody with me very good let's see if you guys can solve one more question let's see if you can solve one more question guys magnitude of magnitude of 3 i cap minus j cap 3 i cap minus j cap what is the modulus modulus means magnitude that means you take the root squares add it that's what it means come on my dear warriors what should this answer be what should this answer be it should be root of 3 square plus minus 1 is square 3 square is 9 1 square is 1 so it will be root of 10 let's see how many of you have written root of 10 very good very good excellent excellent similarly if i ask you another example root uh, sorry modulus of i cap plus j cap plus k cap come on my dear students what will you do when three numbers are there simple if three numbers are there remember i had taught you this i had taught you this for 2d and 3d where did it go here i think yes over here for 2d two number square root for 3d three numbers square and then the root that's all that's all that's the only difference guys so over here what are you going to do what are you going to do you are just going to write this as you're just going to write this as what guys root of one square plus one square plus one square that is basically root of three that's it that's the answer very nice very nice let's do one more question let's do one more question root of, sorry not root magnitude of magnitude of okay this is basically let's say 3 i cap minus 4 j cap minus uh, 5 k cap all right magnitude of this particular vector come on my dear students i want everybody posting the answers figure it out on yourself by yourself this will be root of Take the x component 3 square plus minus 4 square is same as 4 square only plus minus 5 square many people take the minus sign over here be careful square of a negative number is positive guys so this will be root of 9 plus 16 plus 25 9 plus 16 is 25 25 plus 25 is 50 50 i can write it as 25 into 2 so this will be 5 root 2 so answer should be 5 root 2 or root 50 very good very good very good awesomeness so 50 is 25 into 2 25 root is 5 so 5 root 2 will remain that's it that's how you get the answer another question guys coming up on your screen okay let's see if you guys can solve this is is i cap minus j cap plus k cap and unit vector and unit vector that's the question guys come on figure this out is it an unit vector just find the magnitude of it the magnitude of it what will be the magnitude of that guys it will be root of one square plus one square plus one square which is root three which is not one hence it is definitely not an unit vector definitely it is not a unit vector very good excellent day let's do another question guys coming up on your screen find find b such that such that 3 i cap minus okay uh, b j cap is unit vector 
is unit vector that is the question guys find the value of b such that 3 i cap minus b j cap actually this is not supposed to be 3 i cap this is 1 by 3 i cap 1 by 3 i cap minus b j cap is an unit vector let's try to figure this out guys how do we do this first find the magnitude and then equate it to 1 because you want it to be a unit vector what's the magnitude the magnitude should be basically 1 right because it has to be unit vector so what is the magnitude guys root of 1 by 3 square plus b square so this is equal to 1 square both sides so this will be 1 by 9 plus plus b square is equal to 1 so b square will be 8 by 9 naturally what is the value of b take the root of this root of 8 by 9 which is root of 4 into 2 by 9 which is 2 by 3 root 2 that is the value of b done done are done very good root of 8 by 9 or 2 root 2 by 3 one and the same thing one and the same thing root of 8 by 9 or 2 root 2 by 3 is one and the same thing very good excellent day guys understood how to solve the questions on magnitude how to represent vectors like magnitude how to show vector sorry how to show vectors in terms of i j k components everybody clear everybody is clear over here everybody has understood this awesome awesome let's let's also do one more thing vector representation is done this part finding a unit vector in somebody else's direction finding a unit vector in somebody else's direction meaning imagine pandu's velocity pandu's velocity v bar is example 3 i cap 3 i cap minus 4 j cap first try to visualize where is 3 i cap 3 i cap will be here where is minus 4 j cap minus 4 j cap will be here so pandu's velocity is basically like this pandu's velocity is basically like this are you able to visualize this the moment you write it in ijk form right becomes very easy uh, positive x positive y or negative x or negative y very easy to figure that out right now observe the length of this what is the length of this the length of this will be root of 3 square plus 3 square plus minus 4 square minus 4 is same as 4 only so this is basically 9 plus 16 which is root 25 which is basically 5 so the length of this is 5 units but imagine now i ask you a special question and the special question is what is a unit vector unit vector along along pandu's pandu's velocity that is the question unit vector along that direction if you go anywhere in this direction the length might not be one it could be five it could be ten it could be anything guys i don't know why that <laughs> this is equal to five okay yeah i want a vector of unit in length that means something like this basically a vector like this which is of unity in length guys i got an idea the length is five right if i take this vector and divide it into five parts each part will be v hat in fact v hat v hat v hat v hat v hat will come five times right will come five times right to give you the final vector v so can i say v hat will be the actual vector v divided by five times this five was the magnitude of that vector was the magnitude of the vector divided into five parts very good so what is my original vector it was 3 i cap and minus 4 j cap divided with 5 so basically it is 3 by 5 i cap minus 4 by 5 j cap what it means is is you go 3 by 5 i cap 3 by 5 i cap minus 4 by 5 j cap minus 4 by 5 j cap that vector which you get will be v hat 
that vector which you get will be v hat and the magnitude of that will be 1. The magnitude of that will be 1. That's how you find unit vector along any other vector. That's how you find unit vector along any vector. So the theory for that is basically like this. Unit vector, unit vector along other vector. Unit vector along other vector. So in general, guys, if you have any vector like this and you want to find unit vector along that vector, unit vector along that vector, then that V hat will be given by V bar divided by V. So this V is basically, uh, you can also say it is the magnitude of that vector. So it is the magnitude of the vector, which will be root of Vx square plus Vy square plus Vz square for 3D. And it will be just root of Vx square plus Vy square for 2D. So this one is for 3D, that one is for 2D. Is this formula very, very clear in your heads? Did you understand how we use that formula in the previous question, my dear warriors? This is the formula. V bar, take the vector, divide it with the magnitude. That's all. Exactly. So that's how you find unit vector along any other vector. So we have done. How do we represent vectors? How do we find magnitudes? We have solved so many questions. I think it's a good time that we solve some more quiz questions. And here it comes. Oops, I showed the answer by mistake. Ignore. What is the numerical value of the vector? What is the numerical value of this vector means magnitude numerical value means find the find the magnitude magnitude basically they are asking you modulus 3i cap plus 4j cap plus 5k cap just find the modulus of this that's what they are asking you let's see how many of you can solve this come on come on come on come on many of you are saying option b is that so so guys let's try this out root of x component square y component square z component square which is basically phi square so this will be 9 plus 16 plus 25 which is 25 plus 25 which is 50 oh this number we had just seen some time back root 50 guys is nothing but take 5 outside and root 2 will remain inside that is option b don't get confused with option d don't get confused with option D. Exactly, my dear warriors. That's the answer. And by mistake, I had also leaked the answer by pressing the next button. All right. Very good. I can see that immense confidence. I can see that josh and that energy in your chats. Keep that up, guys. Keep that up. Do you find this marathon to be useful? Do you find whatever I am teaching is right from the basic and I am slowly scaling you up? Do you see the level of confidence when you are taught properly every specific thing? It is basically a procedure or a series of steps which you just need to practice. My job is to teach, your job is to practice. My job is to teach, your job is to practice. Keep this thing in mind. I am going to teach, you are going to practice, practice, practice so much that one day everything will feel like just like drinking water. Just like drinking water. That's all. That's my aim. And then you will be like, sir, 170 was easy. 180 is also easy. I could have just got that also. That's how you will feel. Right? Come on, my dear students. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. Now, this is a very special application. And there is one part which I need to tell you about, which I had mentioned in this particular part. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Hmm. <laughs> Yes, right over here, right over here, guys. I told you triangle law, I told you parallelogram law, I told you polygon law, I told you how to add two vectors using formula. Last thing, we did resolution, we did components, we did IJK. How do you add vectors using that? How do you basically add vectors using that? So let's come to that part as well, guys. Coming up right now, one second, where did it go? Just one second, guys. Hmm. Okay. Now, if I told you to add vectors using geometry, you have to always think, okay, triangle, head, tail, tail, head, polygon, head, tail, tail, head, parallelogram, okay, tail, tail, okay, diagonal, okay, complete parallelogram. Confusing. Sometimes formula, a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta root. Okay, fine, that is also okay. But when you have multiple vectors, 
when the angles are crazy then it might become difficult but what if i tell you there is a very very lallu eg pg lemon squeezy way to add vectors and that is using components how look at this imagine i tell you there is a vector a which is given by 2i cap minus 3j cap and there is another vector b which is given by let's say 4i cap plus let's say j cap all right this is what the vector is now somebody asks you find the vector addition that means what is a vector plus b vector all you need to do is really add their i parts and their j parts numerically that's it you will get the final vector in i cap j cap component so this will be 2 plus 4 which is 6 i cap minus 3 plus 1 which is minus 2 j cap that's it that's it nothing else simple if somebody tells you if somebody tells you find a bar minus b bar a minus b 2 minus 4 2 minus 4 minus 2 i cap minus 3 minus 1 minus 3 minus 1 minus 4 so minus 4 j cap that's it so easy so simple this is how you add subtract vectors guys in components another example let's see if you guys can solve this example a vector is i cap minus 2 j cap b vector is 2 j cap plus 3 k cap c vector is i cap plus 2 j cap minus k cap question is question is find the addition of all of them a bar plus b bar plus c bar come on a bar plus b bar plus c bar come on my dear warriors come on come on come on what is the correct answer i is add with i this is not i this is j i with i i plus i will be 2i very good minus 2j plus 2j plus 2j minus 2 2 cancels only 1 2 remaining so plus 2j cap correct 3k cap no k cap minus 1 k cap 0 3 minus 1 3 minus 1 is 2 so this will be just 2k cap let's see how many of you got it 2i 2j 2k 2i 2j 2k such a nice thing to say 2i 2j 2k such a nice thing to say i hope somebody listens and makes it like a song you know these days the songs are also like this only all a b a b rhyme scheme or a a rhyme scheme very good awesomeness let's solve the question then magnitude of the x component and the y component of vector a are 7 and 6 units the magnitude of x and y components of a plus b vector is 11 and 9 units a vector and b vector together you give you a plus b so question is what is the component of sorry what is the magnitude of b vector hmm let's think i know one thing i know one thing if i have vector a and if i have vector b and i'm getting vector a plus b over here right if this vector a if this vector a has x component 7 7 and basically 6 the net vector has the components 11 and 9 think what should fill in over here to give this what should fill in over here to give this my dear warriors come on think 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 7 plus what will give you 11 3 so this will be 3 i cap 6 plus what will give you 9 oh sorry not 3 my bad 4 ah, so 4 i cap over here 7 plus 4 will give you 11 6 plus what will give you 9 obviously 3 so this will be 3 j cap so i found vector b but that's not the question the question is what's the magnitude of that vector that means you have to take 4 square you have to take 3 square root so this will be 25 which is 5 5 is answer a 
5 is answer A. Very good. I don't know why they have marked it as 8. This is not the wrong, uh, this is not the right answer. This is the correct answer, guys. Yeah. So the correct answer is option A. 5. Is that clear, my dear students? Very good. Excellent. Let's move on to more questions, guys. Come on. Let's start solving. Here comes the next question. What vector must be added to the sum of two vectors, this and this, so that the resultant is a unit vector along z axis what is a unit vector along z axis oh it's a special vector i cap j cap k cap k cap that's the vector along z z axis unit vector along z axis is basically k cap so let's visualize the question guys vectors are 2 i cap minus j cap plus 3 k cap the next vector to be added to this is 3 i cap uh, minus 2j and you have minus 2k what I want to do is add one more vector over here such that the resultant is 0i 0j and only k cap should remain only k cap should remain that's what is the question think what will come over here think logically my dear warriors what will come over here if they have to cancel think guys 2i and 3i is 5i, 2 and 3 is 5. So to cancel it, I will need minus 5i cap. To cancel it, I will need minus 5i cap. Minus j minus 2j will become minus 3. Minus 3 to cancel it, I will need plus 3j cap. Plus 3j cap, got it. 3 minus 2 is 1k cap. And I want 1k cap. So don't do anything over here. Don't do anything over here. So this is 0. Okay, plus 0, nothing. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1k one cap is remaining. So 5i with negative sign, 3j with positive sign. So that is option B. Exactly. Understood, guys? Yes, Gopi Kastri, you can join the Avengers batch and we have a lot of fun. Definitely. Just like we have it here, 10x more times. Okay, so do not forget to check out the link which is there in the description box there will be recap classes there will be special things which you are going to do in this avengers reloaded batch along with obviously the earlier students you are going to be a big big team now okay so yes i would be waiting to see all of you in the avengers batch as well moving on to the next question unit vector parallel along parallel along same thing Resultant of two vectors will be how much? First find what is the resultant. So A bar and B bar's resultant. So that will be A bar plus B bar. This I will call it as the resultant. So A is basically 4i minus 3j. B is basically 8i plus 8j. So let's find the resultant. What is the resultant turning out to be? What is the resultant turning out to be 4 plus 8? 12 i minus 3 plus 8 plus 5. That is the magnitude. Sorry, that is a vector which is the resultant. But the question is find the unit vector along some vector. So basically the question is what is r hat? r hat is what is asked. Unit vector parallel to that along vector divided by magnitude. That's the formula I just told you. That's the formula. That's what I told you. So what is R vector? It is basically 12 I cap plus 5 J cap divided by the magnitude. Magnitude means root of 12 square plus 5 square. So this will be 12 I plus 5 J. Guys, tell me what is 12 square? 144. 5 square? 25. 144 plus 25? 169. It's a perfect square of 13. So this will be 13. So that's the answer. 1 by 13, 12 I, 5 J, which is option B, of course. Uh, this is wrong. Again, why are the answers marked wrong? This is not the correct answer. This is the correct answer. Okay. This is the correct answer. Everyone with me? Very good, Isha. Very good, Mochi. Very good, Hrithik. Very good, Anusha. Very good, Pragati. Very good, Dishoj. Very good, Priya Varma. Awesome, Karthi. Awesome, Anandini. Great. Proud of you. Guys, are you seeing how we are solving up the problems which were earlier very difficult for all of you? All right, let's move on to the next part and that is the dot product now. 
wow aren't you guys excited and you guys thrilled that in this one class in a very simple basic to advanced manner i have scaled up your level and i'm teaching you every bit and piece of vector after this class you will be completely refreshed with vectors even if you're starting from the scratch you will understand everything right go slow if you feel that i have gone fast somewhere please watch it as a replay don't ask me to repeat because that's the advantage of youtube right you can just play this lecture or the part which you want to understand again and again till you get it because every step every type of problem i am trying to cover in this particular class so let's go to dot product now why this dot product and what is this thing see guys you can add vectors you can subtract vectors you can add vectors you can subtract vectors can you divide vectors can you multiply vectors the answer to that is you cannot divide vectors but you can multiply vectors but the problem with multiplication is sometimes when you multiply two vectors the answer is a scalar sometimes when you multiply two vectors the answer is a vector so there are two types of multiplication division is not defined in vectors you cannot divide vectors you can add vectors you can subtract vectors you can multiply vectors you cannot cannot divide vectors keep that in mind so imagine i want to multiply multiply a vector i want, want to multiply vectors now there are two ways of doing this two ways of doing this vector multiplied by vector multiplied by another vector and vector multiplied by vector multiplied by a scalar when you multiply a vector with a vector there are two parts there are two approaches or two different possibilities the outcome could be a scalar or the outcome could be a vector if it is a scalar then you are going to say it is basically a dot product this is called as this process is called dot product or you are doing dot product here when you get a vector it is called as cross product cross product this is very simple this example i can give you you will yourself understand imagine i say 5 i cap what is this this is a vector what is this this is a scalar so definitely you can multiply a scalar with a vector definitely another example if i tell you 7 7 times v bar meaning you have a vector called v bar you have a vector called v bar 7 v bar is 7 times of it 7 times of it so you can multiply a vector with a scalar it will just elongate stretch it that's all is that clear it's just going to stretch it another example guys another example okay say 3 times of i cap minus 2j cap it's multiplying a scalar with a vector so the answer will be again a vector you will see it will be 3 i cap minus 6 uh, j cap that's all that's all as simple as that right so that's how you can multiply with a scalar which is very simple the problem is with this now how you write this is very important when you are taking a dot product so you will have vector 1 over here you will have vector 2 over here vectors are always put with bars the symbol that you use will be a dot the symbol that you use will be a dot the outcome will be a scalar number the outcome will be a scalar number whereas over here there will be vector 1 there will be another vector 2 you will put a cross symbol the outcome will be a vector quantity the outcome will be a vector quantity that's the basic difference between scalar product and a cross product what are the detailed things i will come to it but for now are you able to understand how to multiply vectors I'm using flow charts. I'm using mind maps to give you a very clear understanding of different possibilities. When you multiply vectors, how to add vectors. Also, I give you a flow chart, everything in detail. Very good, guys. Now, 
let's talk about first the dot product or the scalar product then i will go to the more difficult one which is the vector product and then we'll also see the applications of each one of them right so let's start dot product so if i have a vector if i have a vector a and then let's say a vector b and maybe the angle between them is let's say theta then a vector dot b vector is defined only in this particular manner take the magnitude of one vector take the magnitude of the other vector and multiply it with the cos of the angle between them now don't ask sir why not sine why not tan the reason is nobody discover nobody invent uh, uh, you know nobody got this dot product idea randomly they saw different physical quantities Oh, work, oh, power, oh, flux, oh, in magnetism. Oh, every time when you multiply two vectors and you get the answer as a scalar, it's always coming out as cos. They saw a trend. You also see trends, no? When you have to mark fluke in the options in your answer sheet, OMR sheet, what do you do? Achha, bees, hmm, many bees are there. Hmm. C's are less so I have to give to come is okay B's are more so maybe this option can be C so that's how you guess same way the scientists saw the trends whenever you multiply let's say for example force into displacement what is force into displacement force is a vector displacement is a vector their product is a scalar which is work oh and every time you will see it is cos 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 is coming cause of the angle between them so then they said okay whenever you take two vectors and get a scalar the answer will contain cause of angle between them multiplied with the magnitudes multiplied with the magnitudes that's all everybody with me yes kirti Swar, i was born in salem bacha i was born in salem yeah so that's the true definition of a dot product guys i have a question for you now what is the max value what is the max value max value of a dot b come on my dear students what is the max value of a dot b maximum value what is the angle that you will choose cos 0 1 cos 90 0 oh ho, ho, i'll put 0 guys so it will be a b cos 0 basically it will be a b so basically theta should be zero degrees basically a vector should be parallel to b vector is that clear is that clear very good uh, dr ruby tamil terilla kanjam kanjam tamil teruma okay now if i ask you what is the minimum value of a dot b then what is the answer then what is the answer wanna come wanna come doctor wanna come what is the minimum value 90 no something can be less than 90 also cos 90 0 cos 0 1 cos 180 minus 1 yes so it will be a b cos 180 180 is minus 1 so minus a b negative number is less than 0 no so here theta is 180 basically a bar is anti parallel to b vector that's when it is least awesomeness very good guys one more thing if i say a vector dot b vector is 0 but a is not 0 b is not 0 a is not 0 b is not 0 then what will you think in your mind a dot b is 0 a is not 0 b is not 0 so cos is 0 whose cos is 0 cos 0 is 1 cos 45 1 by root 2 cos 90 cos 90 is 0 hence that means that means cos 90 being 0 that means guys theta is 90 degrees that means guys you know a vector is perpendicular to b vector parallel anti-parallel perpendicular all the three things covered yes yes definitely 
I'm going to give you things to solve. Don't worry, bacha log. All right. Pasangla, don't worry. Pasangla, don't worry. I'm going to give you problems to solve. Pasangla means students. All right. Okay. Chalo, let's go ahead. Uh, hmm. Guys, can you tell me? Can you guys tell me? What will be I cap dot J cap? What will be I cap dot J cap? I perpendicular to J. I perpendicular to J. 90 degrees. Gone. Zero. Big fat zero. In fact, not just this. J dot I. Zero. K dot I. Zero. I dot K. Zero. I dot J is done. K dot J. K dot J. Zero. J dot K. Zero. Everything is zero. Because they are perpendicular. Na? They are all perpendicular unit vectors. Very, very easy. One more doubt I have. Is A dot B the same as B dot A? Is A dot B the same as B dot A? Come on, my dear warriors. What do you guys say? I feel, yes, it is same. A dot B is the same as B dot A. A B cos theta, ba cos theta, B A cos theta. It does not matter. A B cos theta or ba cos theta. One and the same thing. So, it does not matter. So, it is basically commutative. It is basically commutative. Everybody gets this? Very nice. Awesomeness. Now, I ask you, what is, what is a vector dot a vector? Think logically. A vector dot a vector will be a, a cos. What is the angle between them? Zero. So, it will be a square into one, which is basically a square. Correct? Is basically a square if I ask you what is a cap dot a cap what will your answer be magnitude of this one magnitude of this one angle between them zero so one into one into one is just one one into one into one is just one so that gives me the idea okay what will be i cap dot i cap what will be i cap dot i cap guys yes this will be the same as j cap dot j cap which will be the same as k cap dot k cap which will be all equal to 1 i dot i j dot j all are them 1 very nice very nice awesomeness is this allowed in dot product this property if i take dot product of a with b vector and c vector can I split them? Can I open the bracket, distribute them? Yes, we can. So it will be A dot B plus A dot C. So I can distribute. I can distribute them. Distributive law. Definitely that is allowed. So I can show you certain examples on this. Example, my dear warriors. 2 I cap. Let's say if I just do dot product with 5 i cap what do you think the answer will be 2 i cap dot 5 i cap 2 5 za 10 so that's it 10 i into i is 1 i into i is 1 if i ask you if i ask you 3 i cap dot 4 k cap immediately your answer will be 0 i dot k 0 perpendicular perpendicular Okay, Saizan, just keep following me, practicing the books that I've been telling and see how I solve. That's it. You will get the answer. Always use your hand. Always make sure you're solving problems on your own. Next example. 5, 5J dot minus 3, 3J, sorry. All right dot minus 3j what do you think is the answer for this j into j is 1 5 3 is a minus 15 so answer is minus 15 as simple as that another example my dear students if i do uh, 3 uh, k cap dot 
डॉट टू जे कैप वॉट यू थिंक इज दी आंसर के एंड जे परपेंडिकुलर डज नॉट मैटर द आंसर विल बी बिग फैट जीरो राइट नाउ लेट्स गो अ लिटिल बिट फर्दर इमेजिन आई गिव यू अनदर एग्जाम्पल टू आई कैप डॉट थ्री आई कैप प्लस टू जे कैप डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिव लॉ सो इट विल बी टू आई कैप डॉट थ्री आई कैप प्लस टू आई कैप डॉट टू जे कैप टू थ्री जा सिक्स आई इंटू आई इज वन आई इंटू जे जीरो सो द एंसर फॉर दिस इज जस्ट सिक्स दस ऑल द एंसर फॉर दिस इज जस्ट सिक्स एवरीबडी विद मी एवरीबडी विद मी वेरी गुड एरलेस इज फाइन बच्चा देन अनदर क्वेश्चन गाइज लेट्स इफ यू गाइज कैन डू दिस मेंटली ऑल्सो यू कैन डू दिस थ्री आई कैप डॉट माइनस आई कैप प्लस टू जे कैप माइनस थ्री के कैप कम ऑन माई डियर वॉरियर्स वॉट विल बी दी एंसर फॉर दिस सो इट विल बी बेसिकली थ्री आई डॉट माइनस आई प्लस थ्री आई डॉट टू जे प्लस थ्री आई डॉट माइनस थ्री के वी नो थ्री वन जा थ्री बट विद माइनस साइन बिकॉज आई इन टू आई इज जस्ट वन ओके दिस विल बी जीरो दिस विल बी जीरो बिकॉज दे बोथ आर परपेंडिकुलर सो द एंसर इज माइनस थ्री वेरी गुड परीक्षा जतिन बिरबल दिशोज यस राजेश्वरी वेरी गुड माधवन वेरी गुड यशु वेरी गुड गेमर एक्स वेरी गुड पवनी दिया तस्लीम श्रीनाथ वेरी गुड वेरी गुड प्रिया ऑसमनेस यशु ऑसमनेस यस दिस सेशन इज गुड टू स्टार्ट विद वैक्टर्स टू मास्टर वैक्टर्स यू हेव टू सॉल्व बुक्स यू हेव टू सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम्स that's the way you can get mastery if there is any teacher in the world who says that just attend my class that's it you have mastered any topic then 100% he's cheating you i'm not a cheater i know what happens and what you should do i'm a teacher guys understand so guys please practice problems to master a topic i can guide you through the basics i can guide you till you get some confidence beyond that is in your hands all right just like when you become a doctor you have to practice you have to do operations on your own all right let's see if you guys can think about this particular question imagine i say 2i cap minus 3j cap dot minus i cap plus 2j cap what will you do now i know i cap with i cap is 1 j cap with j cap is 1 anything else is just a big fact zero so this goes with this this goes with this so my dear warriors what do i do i will get the answer as minus 2 minus 3 into plus 2 is minus 6 so guys what's the answer what's the answer very good some of you have put it up already minus 8 awesome awesome i just saw that very good awesomeness let's see if you guys can solve this question much bigger question a uh, minus 3i plus 2j plus 3k dot uh, i cap minus j cap plus 4k cap my god so many things i know i cap with i cap is 1 j cap with j cap is 1 k cap with k cap is 1 everything else big fat anda zero so what will you do my dear students minus 3 into 1 minus 3 Plus two into minus one, minus two. Three into four, twelve. Correct. So minus three minus two, minus five. Twelve minus five, seven. That's the answer. Let's see if you guys have got it. Very good. I can see the spam coming through. I can see all your chats coming through. Keep it up, guys. Proud of all of you. So, is it good for me to say now? Is it good for me to say now? A वेक्टर डॉट बी वेक्टर विच इज ए एक्स आई कैप बी ए वाई जे कैप ए वाई जे कैप प्लस ए जेड के कैप डॉट बी एक्स आई कैप प्लस बी वाई जे कैप प्लस बी जेड के कैप टू डिफिकल्ट टू राइट इट बट इट इज वेरी सेल्फ एक्सप्लेनेटरी दिस विल बी ए एक्स बी एक्स प्लस ए वाई बी वाई प्लस ए जेड बी जेड दैट्स इट दैट्स इट अंडरस्टूड गाइस वेरी गुड नाउ यू लाइक सर 
where do I use? Where do I use dot product? Tell me the application, sir. Sir, where do I use integration in life? Sir, where do I? Why do we study physics, sir? Why do we? Nobody asks. Why do we study biology, sir? Biology is love, sir. Why you tell me why I should study physics? What have I done? Yeah, I'm teaching. What is their subject? I'm teaching. Don't ask me such questions. Why physics? Hey, nah? But I'll tell you why dot product. So applications, applications of dot product, applications of dot product, my dear warriors. Thank God. Please support physics. Guys, next time any need student says, Sir, physics is hard, physics is tough, I don't want to. You have to be my support, yeah. Then I will say, Tata, bye bye, do one thing. Let's leave physics, you study only biology only. I will go. Hana? Where do we use? See, Chandrama. <laughs> Already. Yeah, where do we use? Applications. Number one. Number one for physical quantities like work is force dot displacement power 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 is nothing but force dot velocity correct similarly there are many such quantities like for example flux is electric field dot area vector So many places where you need to use dot product guys many places right so this is one of the applications for physical quantities next application to check to check if they are perpendicular so if they are perpendicular a dot b will be zero if they are perpendicular then their dot product will be big fat zero last application guys to find angle between vectors to find angle between vectors how observe you'll be shocked you'll be like sir any vector i can find the angle yes is it that simple yes do i need to visualize no wow please tell me about it here it comes guys look at this imagine a vector is 3i cap minus 4j cap Okay, B vector is, let's say something, what is it, uh, 2i cap minus 2j cap. Question is, what is the angle between A bar and B bar? What is the angle between it? So what you need to do is go by the pure definition. Go by the pure definition of dot product. What is the definition of dot product? It is A dot B is A B cos theta. Therefore, cos theta will be cos theta will be a dot b divided by a b some legendary students after looking at this formula which i have just pasted over here which i have just derived and pasted over here guys these legendary students say sir what kind of formula is this a will cancel with a no sir b will cancel with b no sir a look at these legendary students a and a cancels b and b cancels what is remaining dot sir the answer will be dot sir so cos theta is dot sir what is this sir new math theory this is cos theta is dot these are legendary students no equal vectors what is it ashri ranil i have explained it at the start of the class go back 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 exactly at the start of the class i explain what is the meaning of equal vectors so guys this is not what you do but I'll tell you something. Please tell me the truth. Did you also never not feel the same thing? Honestly, tell me. When you would have seen the formula for the first time, and when you would have applied, you would have thought, na, a dot b and a b, a cancel, b b cancel. What is this? You would have felt that. Honestly, tell me. At least I felt that during my 11th standard. Then I was like, ayo, what is this I'm doing? Chalo, let's go do this. First of all, over here, guys, find a dot b numerator. What is a dot b? So it will be 3 into 2 i with i j with j plus minus 4 into minus 2. 3 2s are 6, 4 2s are 8. What is the answer? It is 14. a dot b is 14. a dot b is 14. Honestly, no. 
The correct answer is dot. <laughs> now, what is A and what is B? Find it separately. What is A? A means magnitude. That means root of 3 square plus 4 square. 3, 9, 4 square, 16, 9 plus 16, 25. Root 25 is 5. B's magnitude means 2 square plus 2 square. What is it? 2 root 2. Isn't it 2 root 2 guys? Everybody with me? So now use this formula. What else is remaining? Nothing. Just use that formula. So cos theta will be a dot b is 14. a dot b is 14. Upon a b, a is 5. Uh, b is 2 root 2. 2 goes with 14. It will become 7. 7 by 5 root 2. So theta will be cos inverse 7 by 5 root 2. Like sir, how many degrees? One tight slap. This will be there in the app option. This will be there in the option Pascal. Okay, everybody with me? So, this will be there in the option. Cos inverse 5 by 7, 5 by root 2, 7 by root 2, cos inverse 7 by 5 root 2. So, it will tick mark. Cos inverse 7 by 5 root 2. Everybody with me? Understood or clear? This is how you find the angle between two vectors. Let's probably solve some questions. Force is this much. Displacement is this much. Time is given. Find the power by the force. Hint, power is work by time and work is force dot displacement. That's your hint. Come on, my dear students, figure this out. What do you think is the correct answer for this? First find work, then find power. That's what the question says. Find the power. So first find work. Work is force dot displacement. So basically it is 2i cap plus 2j cap dot product with the displacement which is 2i cap plus basically 2k cap. I goes with I. So 4. J has nothing to go with. Bechara, single life. K has nobody to go with. Single life. So answer is basically 4 joules. Work is 4 joules. Next part my dear warriors is power. Which is work by time. 4 by time is 16. Which is 1 by 4. So power only 1 fourth. Which is 0.25 watts. 1.25 watts or joules per second one and the same thing so answer is option a of course got it simple egpg lemon squeezy made a mistake Srinath. somebody forgot to divide it with 16 you would have got some different answer and all of that moving on to the next question p is this much q is this much then what is p dot q then what is p dot q guys all right come on figure this out this is very very easy this is very very easy Come on, come on, come on, my dear warriors. P dot Q. So, it will be 2i minus 3j plus k divided by 3i plus 2j. Who is going with i? 2i and 3i. 2, 3 is 6. Minus 3 and plus 2. Minus 6. K has nobody to go with. Single life, 0. 6 minus 6. 0. Oh, 0. Oh, guys. This P is perpendicular to Q. This P is perpendicular to Q. Perfecto. Perfecto. Very good. Very good. Awesomeness. Everybody likes when the answer is 0 or 1 or infinity or none of these. Everybody likes this. Favorite options of the students. 0, 1, infinity, none of these, all of these. Very favorite options. Hello? Moving on. Now, I will go to uh, the next question a dot b is a b then the angle between a and b is then the angle between a and b is come on my dear students what do you think is the correct answer for this particular question a dot b is a b that means actually if a dot b is a b but actually a dot b is a b cos theta that is a b a cancel b b cancel so cos theta will be 1. That means theta will be 0 degree. Where is 0? Option A. Option A. That's the answer. 0 degree. Very good. 0 degree is the answer. Perfecto. I can see everybody. Dr. Ruby Vishwa. 
Mohammad, Asher, very good Santish, very good Pavli, very good, very good Asher, very good Harni, very good, very good. Awesome Shri Harsha, very good Navodhya, very good Anusha, Naz Pragati, awesomeness, proud of you guys. Moving on to the next question, but before that, I will tell you one more application. One more application. Where did it go? Where did it go? Here. Component of a vector along other vector. Along other vector. What do I mean by this? I will tell you. Observe. I'll just add a slide over here. Hmm? Observe now. Imagine this is a vector imagine this is a vector and this is your x-axis this is your y-axis this is your x-axis this is your y-axis if i ask you what is the component of velocity along x i write it as v along x x comes below that is what it means that is what it means this is vx understood now if imagine there is a vector there is a vector like this and there is some other vector maybe like this at some angle maybe a direction maybe a direction now i ask you what is the component of v along a how do you think you will write it if this is v along x if i have to write v along a means what will you write guys you will just write it as v subscript a v below you will write a understood guys understood horizontal is this vertical is this horizontal is x vertical is y but sometimes the x and y can be tilted so it can be anything guys x and y axis so horizontal is the uh, line which is parallel to the earth surface perpendicular is the one which is along the gravity very good now now how do i show this over here that will be only this much that will be only this much just like you get the x component by dropping a perpendicular same way the a component of that velocity will be got by dropping a perpendicular here and this value is none other than this value is none other than v vector dot b hat you can also write velocity or vector along another direction is vector one dot that other vector because b hat is b by the magnitude so you can just divide it with the magnitude so that's how you write it whatever is there below oh, why did i put b my bad sorry this was a this was a so sorry guys so this is v bar dot a bar divided by a that's it so whatever vector you put below put it here whatever vector you put below here below put it here that's how that's how the formula works is that clear i will show you an example so that you guys get an idea this formula is also okay this formula is also okay one and the same thing because unit vector is vector divided by the magnitude i'll just show you an example you'll get an idea all right just look at this particular example find find the component of let's say i don't know like 8 i cap minus 6 j cap along along let's say you know 3 i cap plus 3 j cap that's the question find the component of this vector along this vector let's say i assume this vector as let's say a vector let's say i assume this vector as b vector what has been asked first understand that component of this along this component of v along x v subscript x so component of a along b so component of a along b guys will be a subscript b understood this now what is the formula try to recollect it was nothing but v bar dot a hat 
so that covector dot the other vectors unit vector so basically it is nothing but a vector dot b hat that's all so first find b hat guys that is your first job so b hat my dear warriors will be b vector will be b vector divided by the magnitude b vector is 3i plus 3j the magnitude of that will be 3 square plus 3 squares root so that will be 3i plus 3j and 3 square plus 3 square guys it's basically 3 root 2 3 root 2 3 3 3 3 cancels so i cap plus j cap divided by root 2 that is your b hat vector take this and take the dot product with a so what is vector a it is 8i minus 6j dot product with b hat vector which is i cap by root 2 plus j cap by root 2 let's see what happens 8 into 1 by root 2 is 8 by root 2 minus 6 into 1 by root 2 is minus 6 by root 2 8 minus 6 is basically 2 so 2 by root 2 root 2 root 2 cancels so i'll get it as root 2 that's it that is the answer that's it everybody with me everybody with me understood so coming back what is the meaning of component of something along something like velocity along or vector along x-axis is v subscript x component of this vector along this vector means v subscript a v subscript a or basically you drop the perpendicular that's it this part is called how much is this vector along this direction what's the formula it's nothing but take that vector dot product with that vector along which you want to find the component but of unit vector that's all so in this particular problem i understood this vector's component has to be found along this vector so whichever vector's component you have to find along something that something's unit vector needs to be found unit vector is the vector divided by the magnitude magnitude will be 3 root 2 3 square plus 3 square is 2 into 3 square 3 square comes outside so it will become 3 3 root 2 3 3 3 3 cancels so i cap by root 2 plus j cap by root 2 put that here instead of b cap a cap a bar is just this one put it as it is don't find the unit vector now just do the dot product 8 i goes with i by root 2 minus 6 j goes with j by root 2 multiply it and you'll get the answer all right everybody awesomeness awesomeness so let's see if you guys can solve the next question which is there on the screen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is also done ha huh. projection of p on q is how much projection of p on q is how much come on avinash if something is open then go there only now what are you doing here wasting your time or you tell me how much money you got to do this nonsense you know if it is OP, then do OP over there. Now, why are you coming here and doing OP, OP? <laughs> Such a waste, fellow. All right, come on. P bar dot Q hat or P hat dot Q bar or P cross Q hat or P bar dot uh, P bar cross Q bar. Come on, my dear students. What do you think it is? Yep. Along this projection means what is the component of P along Q. Obviously, you have been asked P subscript Q. So it will be P bar dot Q hat. That's option A. That's option A, of course. Very good. What is A for? Not for A for not Apple. A for AFMC. A for AMS. That should be always running in your mind. Don't forget that. Moving on to the next. And that is the last one of this particular chapter and that is cross product. Are you guys ready and excited? Yep. These marathons are very helpful guys. In one day, one chapter we'll try to complete. If it's a big chapter, we'll split it into two or maximum three parts.
physical world is done already priya watch that class it's already done in the channel go back go to the live past sessions you will see it physical world is done units and dimensions is done basic maths is done watch these classes there right notes where will you get the notes pauni everybody should answer yeah see these kind of questions new students keep coming they don't know you guys know it you guys have been here for a long time so where do you get the notes telegram channel where is the telegram channel link in the description box keep helping the students guys yep very good sir i'm hungry even i'm hungry birbal but i'm teaching you also have that luxury no at least you can take a plate and keep eating and watching i can't do that imagine how will it look i'm eating and teaching so stupid it will look hai na so guys let's go to the last part i think it will take maximum half an hour now okay so it's all up to you how quickly you answer let's see cross product you have a vector a you have another vector b there is an angle between them theta and you draw a unit vector you draw a unit vector like this let's say i call it n cap such that it is perpendicular to b it's also perpendicular to a are you able to visualize this it's a unit vector which is perpendicular to b and also perpendicular to a you can also draw the opposite side this will be downwards like this unit vector is also perpendicular this is minus n cap how did i decide the direction whether i should take it up or down i will come to it in a bit but i hope this much part you are able to visualize now the cross product of a and b a cross b is magnitude of a magnitude of b okay into instead of cos there is sin theta but the answer should be a vector so over here you put n hat that makes it a vector if i just put it as ab sin theta it is not a vector it is a magnitude of it understand so when i write modulus when i write modulus a cross b then it is okay to write it as ab sin theta there is no need of n hat this is the modulus magnitude but vector wise it has a direction so when i do a cross b then i will get a vector whose magnitude is this much in the n hat direction so that would be like this this is your basically a cross b guys in the direction of n hat unit vector n hat take it magnitude times if it is 5 take it 5 times if it is 6 it is 6 times that's what it is that is what is the meaning of a cross b magnitude of a magnitude of b into sin of the angle between them in the unit vector direction which is perpendicular to a and b how do i decide that i'll come to it hold on similarly if i ask you if i ask you what is b cross a then the answer will be still a bar b bar's modulus sin theta but this time this time guys the answer will be negative this time the answer will be negative and hat this time the answer will be negative and hat it will be exactly opposite to it what is exactly happening and can you see guys one more thing that b cross a that b cross a by the way will be exactly in the opposite direction but of the same length this will be b cross a this is how it is defined don't ask sir why sin why not tan that's an invalid question so it's exactly opposite to that can i then say b cross a is it equal to is it equal to a cross b definitely not that means it is not commutative it is not commutative definitely it is not commutative definitely you can see it is not equal to big fat no yep everybody with me everybody with me but they are opposite to each other now how did i decide the direction of n hat basically you have to hold your fingers of your right hand four fingers of your right hand in the direction of a this is your right hand like this can you see the four fingers these are your four fingers in the direction of a like this 
then slowly move towards B. You're like, sir, I can hold it like this also, no? And then take it like that. No. How can you bend your fingers like this? You are some alien or what? Can you bend your fingers like this? You can bend your fingers like this, no? You can bend your fingers like this. Which alien will bend their fingers like that? Right? Okay. So, turn it towards B. Turn it towards B. As you curl your fingers towards that particular B direction, towards your B direction, guys, won't your thumb point upwards? Won't your thumb point upwards? That is the direction of N hat or basically A cross V. Is that understood? Everybody? Yeah, I can see right hand rule. Very good, guys. You know, there are instances in the NEET exam where students are so tensed, so involved in the exam, they are solving the question. Ha, ah, cross product question. Okay, A cross B, no? Hmm, okay, let me just do it. A is here, B is here, A cross B this way. Okay, it's upwards. Upwards. Done. Next question. You know, you are writing, you are marking in the right hand and just because you are so involved, you are using left hand. So, please don't do that. You will get exactly opposite answer. If you use left hand, you will get exactly opposite answer. So, please don't do that, guys. Okay, especially happen. Silly mistake in the exam. I am telling you, common. Great. Now, guys, let's see if you guys can figure out the direction of A cross B. Just I am going to give you a few vectors. Imagine, this is vector A. This, in the plane of the board, it is vector B. A is right, B is up. A is right, B is up. Turn your fingers. See how you are going to turn your fingers of your right hand. Come on, my dear warriors. Yes, I'm going to help you out, Nihal, once more. Watch this. Watch this properly. A, first put four fingers in the direction of A. Turn it towards B. Obviously, you can't turn like this. So, bend your hand this way. Bend your hand this way. A into B. A, then B. First in the direction of A, then in the direction of B. See where is the thumb coming? Is it coming into the camera? That means away from you. Uh, sorry, towards you, my man. So, will this be the direction of A cross B, guys? Towards you will be the direction of A cross B. Everybody with me? Outside the plane? Awesomeness. Awesomeness. Come on, my dear warriors. If I do, if I do, this is J cap. Okay? And let's say this is basically K cap. And this is basically I cap. Guys, can you think clearly and tell me what will be J cap cross K cap? Quickly. J cross K. J cross K. Okay? Visualize this in 3D. Visualize this in 3D. They are all mutually perpendicular. Visualize this in three dimension. J is up. K is towards you. J is up. J is up. K is towards you. So hold your four fingers like this. Facing your head. Facing your face. J is up. K is towards you. Bend it. J is up. K is towards you. Move it towards you. See where the thumb is going. I think it is going towards the left side. I think it is going towards the left side. So what is the answer? Yes, it is I cap. Exactly. Very good. It is in the direction of I cap. I hope this is clear. Understood oh, clear oh, perfect oh. Can we move ahead? Now, if I give you certain things like over here, what will be, what will be A cross A? Come on, I want everybody spamming the answers. I want everybody spamming the answers. A cross A. It will be A into A into angle between them is zero. So sine zero. Sine zero is zero. Answer will be zero. It's zero guys. But do you remember what was A dot A? A dot A was A square. Dot product was A square. But cross product was zero. Perfect. What do you think will be A hat cross A hat? That will be also zero. Because sine zero is zero. Very good. Can you guys think and tell me I cross I, J cross J and and obviously K cross K. What will it be? It will be also a big fat zero guys. Great. But then what about, what about 
इमेजिन आई क्रॉस जे जे क्रॉस के के क्रॉस आई देन जे क्रॉस आई देन के क्रॉस जे एंड देन आई क्रॉस के वॉट अबाउट दिस इफ यू ट्राई टू डू इट दिस वे राइट हैंड रूल इफ यू यूज राइट हैंड रूल एंड देन फाइंड इट यू कैन डू इट बट आई फील इट हर्ट्स योर हैंड नंबर टू इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू विजुअलाइज आई जे के हाउ टू डू इट थर्ड थिंग इफ यू डू दिस थिंग्स इन द एग्जाम यू विल लुक लाइक अ रीट आर्ड टीचर विल थिंक यू आर गॉन मैड वॉट इज दिस he will think that you are copying or something yes or no guys how will you look retard no very good so i'll tell you simple way i'll tell you simple way what will you do first put i clockwise just like the clock goes i j k clock i j k cool if you go clockwise the answer is positive if you go anti clockwise the answer is negative as simple as that now i'll tell you how to fill up this first i cross j i to j isn't it clockwise hence the answer will be positive j to k j to k clockwise correct positive k to i k to i clockwise positive j to i j to i j to i anti clockwise negative k to j k to j k to j i'm going anti clockwise guys don't say sir i can go k to j like this shortest way only negative i to k i to k don't say i will go like that that is long cut short cut i to k anti clockwise so negative is that part clear is this part clear thank you for all the love lakshmi from karnataka and i hope you will watch the entire class after the session is over great now what will come over here whatever symbol is remaining whatever symbol is remaining for example what symbol is remaining here j i one thing is remaining k k j what symbol is remaining i i k what symbol is remaining j that's it over here also you can do the same thing i j which is remaining k j k what is remaining i k i what is remaining j dan 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 got it such a simple method now you will look like a smart intelligent person i j k clockwise anti clockwise you will not look like this doing this no no pt no pt exercise okay very good now next important thing guys okay one second over here you can use distributiveness over here meaning a bar cross b bar plus c bar will be will be a cross b plus a cross c that is okay no problem no problem a example let's take a example you will understand this let's start with simple ones first 2 i cross 3 i let's see what is your answer i want everybody spamming the answer come on come on come on Hi Lakshmi. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Rakshit. Okay, fine. Zero. I and I same direction. I cross I zero. I just told you know. I I J J K K zero. Cross is zero. Dot is one. Cross is zero. Dot is one. Great. So this will be zero. Next. Next. Three I cross. 4j this is not dot this is cross if this was dot the answer would have been zero i j i j will give me k i j will give me k i and j are in clockwise direction i j is in clockwise direction answer is positive 
So I'll put plus also. 3 into 4 is 12. So put 12 also. Done, done, done. Next question. Minus 2k cross 4j. What do you think is the answer for this? First go like this. Kj. What will come next? What is remaining? Kj and i. So i is remaining. Next. Minus 2 into 4 is minus 8. Okay. Minus 8. Next. K into j. What will be the sign? Go back. K into j. Anti-clockwise. So negative again. So hence put minus sign. So it will be plus 8 i cap. Minus minus becomes plus. Minus minus becomes plus. Some of you are putting that minus sign extra. Guys be careful. Right. Great. Let's do another example. Minus 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 3 i cap cross minus 5 k cap come on let's see how many of you can get this i k what is remaining j so obviously j will come over here i and k j is remaining minus 3 into minus 5 minus minus plus 3 5 are 15 so put 15 i into k i into k i into k i'm going anti-clockwise so negative so i'll put a minus sign so minus 15 j cap got it so let's see if you guys can solve this particular question using distributive law using distributive law 2 i cap cross 3 i cap plus 2 j cap come on my dear warriors what is the answer for this 2 into 3 i cap guys i into i is 0 i into <coughs> 0 what is remaining is basically 2 i cross 2 j that's it i'm using distributiveness so 2 2 is 4 i into j k i cross j i j k clockwise so positive so plus 4 k is the answer okay understood or clear -o? no problem short the million you can watch the remaining part later on now you might be thinking sir what if it is a big scary question like this 2 i cap minus j cap plus 3 k cap cross imagine you know i cap plus 3 j cap minus 2 k cap imagine you have to do this it will be so lengthy no it will be so lengthy, no? I'll teach you a simple way. Should I teach you a simple way? Observe. Mark my steps. You can make short notes later on. As I'm telling you, mark my statements. You can make the short notes as well later on. Observe first. What you should do when you have multiple things, many things, and you have to take cross product. There is no simple formula. There is a procedure. For dot product, it was simple. AX, BX, B, uh, AX, BX, AY, BY, AZ, BZ. For cross, it's not a simple formula. You have to do a process. What is the process? First, write I cap. It's like determinants and matrices, guys. I, J, K. First, put I, J, K. Below I, put the first numbers uh, coefficients or components. 2, minus 1, 3. Then the next number. Go in order, guys. So, I caps coefficient is 1, J caps is 3 and K caps is minus 2. Everybody done till this point? So, first put I, J, K, then put each vector's components in order. Everybody done till this point? Very good. Determinant method. Right. Now, what you will do? Put I cap and put brackets. I cap and then brackets. Then definitely put minus sign. Don't miss this minus sign. And then put J cap. Then put J cap. Then lastly put plus sign. Put brackets. And then put K cap. Everybody fine till this point? Everybody fine till this point? Plus, minus, plus. Always this order. That is the trick. That is the process. Follow this. Alright. Now what will you do? For this I cap. For this I cap. Forget this column. Forget this row. Forget this column. Forget this row. Whatever is remaining, take that over here. So guys, how? Minus 1, 3, 3, minus 2. Forget this column. Forget this row. Minus 1, 3, 3, minus 2. Now, do you remember those days when teacher used to give you wrong 
Do you remember those days when teacher used to give you? Incorrect. Wrong. Favorite symbol of teachers. This is the favorite symbol of teachers. Yes. This is the favorite symbol of teachers. Yes or no? Agree or disagree? So just do that. This is the direction in which you need to go. Go like this and come like that. Go like this and come like that. Are you able to see that? So minus 1 into minus 2 guys. Minus 1 into minus 2 guys is 2. 3 into 3 is 9. So 2 minus 9. What is it guys? What is it guys? Minus 7. Got it? So hence you will put minus 7. That's all. Okay. Now let's go to J. Forget the column. Forget the row. What is remaining? 2, 3, 1, minus 2. 2, 3, 1, minus 2. Forget the column. Forget the row. 2, 3, 1, minus 2. Go like this. 2 into minus 2 guys. 2 into minus 2 is minus 4. 3 into 1, 3. So minus. Put minus sign always. Minus 4 minus 3, minus 7, minus 7. So put minus 7 over here. Got it? Last one. Forget the column, forget the row. So what is remaining? 2 minus 1, 2 minus 1, 1, 3. 1, 3. Again go like this. 2 into 3, 6. Minus 1 into 1, minus 1. And then put minus. 6 minus minus 1, 6 plus 1. 6 plus 1, 7. Wow, 7k cap. So guys, the final answer is minus 7i cap, minus minus plus, so 7j cap, and this is 7k cap. What a beauty. Got it? This is how cross multiplication is done. I have explained each and every step of the problem. Any problem now, you can solve it exactly using the same process. Exactly using the same process. Come on, let's see if you guys can do this. Let's see if you guys can do this. P dot Q is 0, then P cross Q is. P dot Q is 0. Think what it means. Then you will get the answer for P cross Q. If the dot product of two vectors is a big fact 0 that means p vector is perpendicular to q vector that means the angle theta is 90 degree so p cross q's magnitude will be p q sin 90 sin 90 is 1 so it will be p q p q p q p q option a done done are done yes that's the correct answer that's the correct answer very good guys Proud of all of you if you are given the right answer. Let's move to the next question. I'm writing it in front of you. Here's the question. Magnitude P cross Q is equal to magnitude P dot Q. Question is, what is the angle between P vector and the Q vector? Come on guys. P cross Q's magnitude is same as P dot Q's magnitude. What do you think is the angle between these two vectors? Come on, come on, come on, my dear warriors. What do you think the correct answer is? 45. Wow, very nice, yeah. P cross Q's magnitude will be P into Q into sine theta. P dot Q will be P into Q into cos theta. P, P, bye bye. Q, Q, bye bye. So it will be sine theta is cos theta. Take cos below, it will become tan theta. Tan theta is 1, theta is 45 degree. Very good. Proud of you. Awesomeness, awesomeness. Next question, guys. But before that, actually, let me tell you the application application many students are like sir what is the application application of cross of cross product of cross product 
there are many applications number one guys what is number one what is number one finding physical quantities like torque is r cross f or angular momentum is r cross b right so many examples are there force in magnetism is charge into velocity cross magnetic field and so much more okay this is one of the major application now second application that you can think second application that you can think predominantly it is mathematical it is not useful for physics guys but i'm just telling this to you like for finding area of triangle and parallelogram so basically what happens is if you have a triangle like this this is a vector this is b vector this is a vector this is b vector and then and then i want to find what is this area i want to find what is this area so the area of this particular triangle whose sides are given by vectors whose sides are given by vectors is nothing but half times magnitude of a cross b magnitude of a cross b just find the modulus that's it the value of it half times gives you the area of the triangle and the same way guys you can do it for parallelogram so if there is a vector a and if there is a vector b if there is a vector b and then i want to make a parallelogram like this everybody knows how to make a parallelogram and i want to find the area of that parallelogram so i want to find wow what is this hmm to find the area of this particular parallelogram so the area of this particular parallelogram there is no half in this formula it's just the modulus of a cross b it's just the modulus of a cross b oops that's it so this is the application but this will not be asked in need this is a mathematical itself yep i hope this is clear so these are the typical applications guys so i've kept some homework questions obviously for all of you so i want you guys to solve this so this is your first homework question guys please take a screenshot of this this is your first homework question try to solve this and post the answers in the comment section the way you guys are going to mark the attendance is posting it in the comment section the answer for this question and there is one more question i think yes this is the next question take a screenshot and put the answer in the comment section that's going to mark your attendance is there any other question no that's it now before we end the class one important announcement my dear warriors do you know when the next class is do you know when the next class is go to home okay right now this is going on do you see upcoming classes it's right over here the next class for me is motion in a straight line it's live in four days june 21st if you're watching this as recorded obviously you will have to search it in the past videos i want everybody to go and start smashing the like button right now because that is going to show your strength and support if i don't see you guys marking your attendance over here guys trust me this series will not be able to continue so you have to make sure you go to the next class of each and every teacher and smash the like button right away right now that's what you need to do i want all the students who are watching this class to do that right away right now and if you are watching this as recorded watch that class that will be already over then right so guys thank you very much thank you for your support and we have completed vectors so vectors done and dusted with the homework answers vectors done and dusted with the homework answers in the comment section as soon as i end the stream thank you very much have your lovely dinner spend time with your family revise and sleep well sleep tight i'll be seeing you once again very soon this is your unacademy neat english channel the one and only guys for all of you and this was your educator captain stress none other than captain stress teaching you guys vectors in one shot standing here right in front of you without having your without having dinner thank you very much bye bye assalamu alaikum take care